There's no excuse. I was going to say the traffic on Belleville Road at 5:30 is not what it's like at the other meeting time. <laughs> Following somebody who crossed on Tyler Road that decided that 35 was a nice speed limit. Not lest ye be late thyself. <laughs> if you leave, you leave five after five. You still end up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. How are we doing, boss? Here, tell your pictures then. The moment you say that kind of number. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Charter Township of Van Buren Planning Commission meeting for Wednesday, <coughs> January 11th, 2023. Have a roll call, please. Brian Cullen. Here. Peter Stefferson is excused. Callie Barr. Here. Bernie Grant. Here. Sherry Budd. Here. Jeff Jar. Here. Brian Kelly. Here. We have a agenda before us. Can I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Motion. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. And a motion by Commissioner Bud, support by Commissioner Jar. Any comments or discussion regarding tonight's agenda? Seeing as none, all in favor to approve the agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? And this evening's agenda is approved. Brings us up to approval of the minutes from our regular meeting dated December 14th, 2022. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the minutes for the meeting of December 14th, 2022 as submitted. Support? Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Cullen. Any comments or discussion regarding the proposed minutes? Seeing as none, all in favor to approve the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved for tonight. Our first item up on our agenda this evening is a public hearing on item number one, case number 22-053, Crossroads Distribution Center North, LLC rezoning. Uh, Director Power, would you like to take a couple minutes and discuss uh, public hearing procedures for us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, there are three public hearing items before you tonight, uh, members of the audience, and thank you for attending. Um, each of these items will have what's called a, a public hearing where we, the Planning Commission solicits input. Uh, it's basically an opportunity for the Planning Commission here to open the uh, floor for comment from the public, take comment, hear comment, but not uh, deliberate or analyze the request in detail. Um, when the public hearing is closed for each of these items, we will then go into a, a section of the agenda called the new business items, at which point we'll get into a, a deeper level of analysis. Um, staff will provide some additional analysis and comment on each of the requests, and then each applicant will uh, provide any statements they'd like to provide. So um, that's the structure of the, the meeting. There's, there's three distinct uh, public hearing items and then three new business items. Um, and again, during public hearing, anybody who's here to speak about each respective item can come up uh, when the item's called out. Uh, and then there's also a live Zoom uh, option for tonight's meeting. I have the Zoom here with me for anybody who's attending remotely. They can uh, raise their virtual hand, dial star nine, or type into the chat to state their comments or questions. So um, that's how this is going to work tonight. Thank you, Director Power. All right, so, uh, First item again is item number one, the Crossroads Distribution Center North, LLC. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we open the public hearing for Crossroads Distribution Center. Support. I have a motion to open the public hearing by Commissioner Bud, support by Commissioner Cullen. All in favor to open the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are open for the public hearing. So on agenda item number one, uh, the crossroads request. If it, just anybody here in the audience would that would like to speak on this agenda item, please step up to the microphone at this point. And right. Through the chair, I will. Uh, I apologize. I said I wouldn't say anything during this part, but I will just give a very brief um, description of each of these requests. So, it, sure. the this first request is pertaining to the rezoning of a roughly 16-acre parcel off of Van Bourne Road. Um, at, at the parcel ID that's described in the agenda. The request is to rezone it from R1B, which is a single family zoning district um, classification to M1 light industrial, uh, which is consistent with the um, 
the future land use for that parcel, which will be discussed more in depth by our planning consultant during the new business portion of the agenda. So anybody who's here to make comment about this uh, parcel rezoning, please feel free to speak up. Uh, is there anybody on Zoom this evening on this agenda either, Director Power? We have five participants, who uh, none of whom have their hands raised. And so it appears there's no comments okay. pertaining to this item. If it appears there's no comments on agenda item one, we have a motion to close the public hearing. I move, move to I close. Make a motion to close. I support. Commissioner Budd uh, <laughs> makes a motion in support by Commissioner Jar. All in favor to close the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed. And the public hearing is closed on item number one. Brings us up to uh, public hearing number two on the agenda. Case 2248, Nicole's Little Friends Group Daycare Home Special Land Use Review. We have a motion to open the public hearing. Through the chair, uh, I motion that we open the public hearing on Nicole's Little Friends Group Daycare Home. We have support for the motion. Support. We have a motion by Commissioner Cullen, support by Commissioner Grant. All in favor to open the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Director Power, would you like to give us a little overview again? Certainly, thank you. Uh, this is a request to uh, apply to the state of Michigan for licensure for a what's called a group daycare home or group child care home uh, that would accommodate uh, a certain number of children in a daily uh, daycare operation. And I say a certain number because the, the rules are actually changing. There was a recent change to the statute regarding child care that's going to increase the number that's allowed under this category. Um, slightly from 12 to 14. Um, so the idea is uh, applying for special approval uh, consistent with the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance uh, for uh, converting this uh, home site at 45921 Chatsworth Drive um, to be used as a group daycare home licensed by the state of Michigan and subject to state of Michigan approval. So uh, child care uses like this are permitted um, in certain categories by right in residential zoning districts and in certain categories like this one by special approval because of the larger number of children that they will be um, overseeing. So this is again a group take care home request for 45921 Chatsworth. If anybody would like to speak to that, please feel free to. I know um, their notification was provided. One more call on item number two. If anybody would like to speak to this agenda item, please step up to the microphone. Director Powers, is there anybody on Zoom with comments this evening? No, there is not. All right, since we have no comments regarding item number two for public hearings, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Move to close the public hearing. Support. Motion to close the public hearing by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner <coughs> Cullen. All in favor to close the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seems none. The public hearing for item number two is closed. Brings us up to item number three on the agenda, case number 22059, Belleville Yacht Club Marine Special Approval. We have a motion to open the public hearing on item number three. Do the chair make a motion to open the public hearing for the Belleville Yacht Club? Support by Commissioner Budd, support by Commissioner Cullen for item number three to open the public hearing. All in favor to open the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? And we are open for a public hearing on the Belleville Yacht Club item number three public hearing. Uh, Director Power. Yes, this is a, a request uh, for uh, site plan review and special approval to construct a marina as defined under six, uh, section 3.120B15 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the proposed use is going to include two dock structures which each contain a single dock stem with four connecting docks. Um, it is officially defined as a marina in the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. Uh, I'll go into more detail during the site plan overview about what that really means specific to this case, but it is uh, essentially to um, rebuild uh, permanent dockage for a uh, marina use at the Belleville Yacht Club. So there was a, a related request on the Board of Zoning Appeals agenda last night pertaining to the length of the dock structures, um, and I'll go through that in my report comments as well. But this is a general public comment about the, the creation of a uh, marina use here um, at the Belleville Yacht Club. Thank you so much, Director Power. Um, 
prior before prior to starting our public hearing on this i'm sure there's a couple of people that want to speak this evening i just wanted to make a general disclosure that i myself am a member of the belleville yacht club um, during the public hearing at this time the commission will not be making comments or anything else they'll be just taking information from the public uh, there will be no voting there will be no other items from the commission so uh, all we're going to be doing at this point is having public comment on the agenda item when it comes up later under new business, then there I will be discussing my role a little bit more and making a request to the board on whether I should be sitting at that point. So uh, for the time being, if anybody would like to speak regarding this agenda item, if you could please step up to the microphone, state your name, state your address, and please be sure to speak very loud in the mic. Uh, the microphone at the podium sometimes does not pick up comments. Angela Mears, is that loud enough? Perfect, thank you. 12007 Reisner Drive. And I think I might be at the wrong meeting. Maybe I should have gone at seven o'clock yesterday. So I don't know, did the results of yesterday meeting approve going out to 120 feet already? That request was postponed. They, they uh, took comment and they, they had some discussion on it, but it was not approved last night. The okay. decision was postponed. All right, well, maybe I'm here at the wrong meeting. Uh, I do appreciate everything that Belleville Yacht Club does for the community and for our school district and the members are very involved. What the site plan doesn't show is its proximity to the DNR boat launch where we have people coming to use our lake. Uh, and again, I don't know if this is the right forum for the length of the dock, uh, but I'm just concerned with increasing it from the 40 to the 120. So. I wanted to share that concern. Thanks. Thank you for coming out this evening. Do you have any other uh, individuals here this evening that would like to speak to this agenda item? Any possible attendance on? Or no? Good evening. Corey Gibson, 43160 East here on River Drive. see so as I mentioned in the zoning meeting last night I said the BYC and his representatives have shown this board lake owners and the taxpayers of this community time and time again that the rules and ordinances don't apply to them just a few examples the current dock violation which reminds a hazard to boaters and we haven't forgotten the structure they put up at the water's edge years ago that referred to as the tiki bar that wasn't permitted when it went up the variance they're asking for would narrow the waterways to approximately 520 feet of no wake travel. When factoring in and allowing the 40 foot dock allowance on the North Shore, the 120 foot request on the South and 100 foot for no wake for each. Now their original plan years ago when the lake meeting was going or the lake ordinance was going into effect was rumored to be somewhere around 140 feet with no wake buoys. The reason I mention the no wake buoys is because that pushes the no wake zone out another 100 feet from the buoy. So uh, now that's something that is DNR approval to my understanding. I had a conversation today with a member of the Sheriff's Marine Unit that made mention of the safety measures as requested by the zoning department in last night's meeting, that one of the requests were to come back when the, the, the meeting with options to make this a safe area. The suggestion by the Marine unit in their professional opinion was that the DNR has to make that choice and their decision would be no wake buoys. I also had a conversation with Jeremy Richardson of Eagle this morning. I said they are fully aware of the BYC and its intent to permit what they are referring to as a marina permit. However, he informed me that there is no such permit in Michigan. This is the same type of permit that a homeowner or another resident would apply for. It's just a, you know, they, they actually don't care about the, feet, the footage going out. They're waiting for this department to decide on that. Some of the examples that I have here, which may be a little difficult to see. This is the original um, view back 2013-14 of the, do the existing docks at the BYC at 50 feet. Last night's meeting, they kept referencing, or referencing that they were replacing docks 
in their original footprint at the 80 foot mark. This is the construction 2021-ish going to 80 feet. You can see on this side, those were the existing docks, that's construction, the new dock going out 80 feet. They weren't at 80 feet to begin with. This is an example just showing measurements from a map view, showing that they're currently at 86 on the new, on the unpermitted section, and the old docks at approximately 50 feet. So it, it, it came across yesterday in the meeting that we were looking at more of like just a, you know, doubling the footage or just a little bit less, but it's a lot more than that. This diagram shows the proposed 120 foot mark. The blue lines represent what the no wake zone would look like around that on the North Shore and South Shore, leaving a 525 foot of no wake travel. Now, I don't know how many of you are boaters, but that's basically two boats passing, towing a tuber or a skier in a safe fashion. Now, to, to meet the zoning ordinance's point of safety and identifying the docks somehow, and most of the opinion of the state of Michigan, the sheriff's department, buoys is probably going to be the suggestion that we come up with. Doing that pushes that out another 50 to 100 feet, narrowing that waterway to 520 feet of no wake travel. So I stand here opposed to this request. I also would like to note that I believe to your earlier comment that anybody that's a BYC member sitting on this board should probably recuse themselves from making decisions on this planning commission. Thank you. Coming out this evening. Thanks. Is there anybody else that would like to speak to this agenda item this evening? Hi, my name is Michelle Montour. I live at uh, 43200 East Huron River Drive. And I just wanted to go on record that I just think it would be unsafe. Um, I know what Corey was mentioning makes it even scarier. That it would be very, very narrow um, and no wake zones. And I don't know, like as Corey said, how many of you are boaters, but um, a lot of boaters and jet skiers do not pay attention to the no wake area. They don't stay 100 feet offshore. Um, if it becomes very, very narrow, um, especially around the launch, I, I just think it's for safety reasons, it's, it's very dangerous. And I just wanted to make sure that my uh, concerns are heard. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Penny Young, 42113 East Huron River Drive. You know, um, if the marina goes in, I know they have to go by the state regulations. That's foremost, the most important. Um, I guess I have concerns safety. The reason why is we just put in a new kayak launching place at the French Landing area, and then we have one in town. And I just feel that if kayakers, we have, you know, I think it's unsafe for kayakers to try to go around that that puts them out in the middle of further into the lake to be hit by boats or whatever i think kayaking is a, a great sport but i think it makes it unsafe for those and we have a rowing team that's out there i watch them i think it's wonderful i think it's also unsafe there but what i really have a question about i know the state's going to regulate this is why our township and i talked to mr powers about this submitted a revised site plan for this marina when the property owners have not submitted an application to the state yet. Why have we spent our man hours, our taxpaying dollars, sending the site plan to the state prior to them sending a revised plan? Why do we take it upon ourselves as a township to do this for the state? Do we do this for other homeowners? Do we do this for other people that want to put a, a dock out further or put a dock out there? Does the township take our man hours and our taxpaying dollars and do this for each individual? That's my question. Why is the township going forward prior to a site plan 
going to the state. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other comments regarding this agenda item? Hi, my name is Harry Van Gelder. I live on Edison Lake, off of Belleville Lake. And uh, I, I'm almost now to the point on the weekend, I, I stay off the lake with my two boats unless I'm fishing in the morning. The whole middle of the lake is just, it's, it's gotten crazy over the years. And if you walk, take your boat and go all around the lake, more and more docks are going into the lake all the time, not just here at the Belleville Yacht Club. I, I really wonder, I've even called them, and a couple of them, are they even permitted? And I have a couple of times, and no one's even gotten back to me. But that area there with, next to the DNR ramp on the weekend is a, is a circus. You've got all these people, particularly in the evening, trying to get their boats off the lake. They're lined up down the middle of the lake, 12 to 13 boats at a time, trying to get out. You've got all these people going by too fast, and now you want to put this right next to the DNR ramp. It just pinches in that whole center of the lake. If you look at one end, you got Sandy's, which is the other main marina, and you go all the way down, and you got the bridge area. Right in the middle is where you want to put this, and it's just going to pinch the lake in. If you're going to safely boat on this lake, you've got to feel certain ways out from the shore. That's legal, right? And now what you're doing is you're just pinching this in. The speed limit's 40, right? Is that the speed limit on the lake? Do you know? It's 40 miles an hour, all right? And if you put all these zones in, it's just going to pinch that all in. I want to know how many boats are going to go in on this dock. When this dock is put in right here at the Yacht Club, how many boats are going to go into that dock? Can anybody answer that question for me? How many boats are you planning on putting into that marina? See, the biggest problem is, you look in the paper all the time, people want a spot to put their boat on the lake. The biggest headache on Belleville Lake is putting your boat in and out. I think we can all agree on that. You look in the paper, people, people would kill for one of my dock spaces. I could get a lot of money for it. I don't want to do it because they don't like putting their boat in and out. The only place to put it in and out, Sandy's is maxed out. They got a waiting list. This is just, I want to know how many boats are going to go in there. Are you going to, is, is the Belleville Yacht Club going to charge people to put the boats in there? You know, what, what's going on here? Because what, what, if, what if some other person wants to start putting docks out? I could make a lot of money sticking docks out. If I had a property, you start renting them out. So this is a concern for me. What kind of precedent is this going to set if we start sticking these docks further and further out in the lake? And if they get to do it, why can't I do it? Why can't somebody else on the lake start doing it? I could make a lot of money putting boats out in the middle of the lake. But there are certain ordinances, and, and I'm not so sure they're all being enforced anyway. So this is a, this is a concern for me. The safety stuff everybody's talked about, that, that's a major concern. I appreciate the fireworks. I appreciate the things that the Belleville Yacht Club does for the community. But I don't think that gives them the right to just pinch out the whole middle of this lake. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming out this evening. Anybody else that would like to speak uh, regarding the BYC request for in the public hearing? Director Power, do we have anybody on Zoom this evening that would like to speak? I do see one hand raised in the Zoom. Um, is that the or Jenny? So Jenny, I will bring you in to talk and have you in the forum here. So I think you're able to go ahead and speak whenever you have a chance. Oh, I'm sorry, Jenny, give me one moment. I can't hear you. I heard you say thank you very faintly. So let me make sure my volume's turned up so everybody can hear your uh, comments. Oh, that should work. Let's let's try that again. Director Power. Is that, that better? Director Power, could you turn the microphone? Yes, that that's better, Jenny. And I'm bring, yes, I'm going to bring the microphone to you as well. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that I I absolutely feel that anybody who's on the board who is a member of the yacht club should recuse themselves um, in this issue, one hundred percent. And that I. 
you know, we're all talking about safety and we really love living on the water. We really love enjoying the lake. Um, but I mean, we, we already have issues with that area. I mean, Tuesday nights with the fishing, it's crazy in that area. And I, 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 see this as a huge safety issue and feel very strongly that this needs to be taken into consideration. Um, I also don't see where this yacht club serves the entire community like a restaurant or something else that serves the whole public. This is a yacht club. It's a private club and it's meant for members only, which means a very small number of people in the community who have the resources to pay for something that extravagant are, are taking over and really altering a public resource that we're all paying to help support. And, um, and I just, I feel very strongly that this is not well thought out. And I disagree with the idea of providing that sort of footage for them. If they had wanted that sort of, you know, docking space, they absolutely should be looking into acquiring more land so that they can stay within the rules and, you know, dock along the shoreline like every other private citizen who is, you know, utilizing the land around here. And thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you so much. Uh, could you please let us know what your last name is as well as your address? Yeah, Jennifer Brown, and I'm at um, 40566 Alden Road. Thank you so much. Is there uh, any other Zoom uh, attendees that are wishing to speak to Dr. Or Director Power? I'm not seeing any other hands raised, and I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, anybody else attending on Zoom tonight, if you'd like to speak about the Belleville Yacht Club case, please feel free to do so at this time. And it looks like we do not have any. Uh, and just for the uh, Planning Commission's knowledge, and thank you, Jenny, I'll uh, see if I can get you back to attendee status. Um, I did share some correspondences that were shared with our Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, which were written, uh, appear to be written as general correspondences, and they're just an informational item. They're on the re they will be on the record of the minutes from last night's BZA meeting, so I just uh, forwarded those. Uh, later, but you can look for those comments in the, the BZA uh, minutes when those are uh, published. So, uh, but those those correspondences were not written specific to this case. Thank you, Director Power. Uh, is there anybody else here this evening that would like to speak to the B, uh, BYC request for the public hearing? No, no one else wishing to speak on this agenda item? We have a motion to close the public hearing. Move that we close the public hearing. Support. A motion to close the public hearing by Commissioner Cohn, support by Commissioner Budd. All in favor to close the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? And the public hearing is closed. That brings us up to our first item under new business. Case 22053, Crossroads Distribution Center, LLC, rezoning. Uh, Director Power, I believe you are set for a... Uh, presentation to begin with, correct? Yes, uh, for this case, I will just have an image on the screen that shows, um, again, what the where the request is located, um, which gives some context as to why it's being requested. Um, and then I'll, I'll defer the rest of the presentation to our planning consultant, uh, principal planner. So uh, again, this is a request by Ashley Crossroads Distribution Center North LLC. Uh, this is a uh, property owner that uh, recently is acquiring the property and has um, significant acreage uh, available for uh, future development of uh, various industrial logistics, warehousing, manufacturing uses to the east. Uh, this is a property that's also zoned industrially, or excuse me, master planned uh, industrially. And so um, it is something that they're pursuing as, as part of their overall land configuration for their future development. So. Uh, we will hear from our planning consultant again with more details and then from the applicant and then we can, uh, the, the planning commission's role tonight on this is to consider recommending the rezoning to the board of trustees. Thank you, Dr. Power. 
Ms. Krishna. Thank you, Director Power, members of the Commission. As Director Power summarized, the request before you is for rezoning a 16.18 acre parcel that is currently zoned R1B single family residential to M1 Light Industrial. The property is owned by Ashley uh, Crossroads Distribution Center North. The parcel in question at this time is vacant and undeveloped, as are the parcels to its north and east. To the west of it is the ITC corridor, and to the south is a utility easement. Once again, the ITC corridor and a detention pond, so technically it is considered undeveloped. The future land use designation for this parcel is light industrial, as it is for the parcels to the north and east. To the west, which is the ITC corridor, the ITC corridor is zoned single-family residential, even though it is completely unbuildable. There are specific standards in the zoning ordinance based upon which every request for amending the zoning map, which is also called the rezoning, is reviewed. I shall summarize those in brief. The first one is, is the request of rezoning consistent with the goals, policies, and objectives of the master plan? Now, the applicant proposes to rezone this parcel to preserve the existing woodland and wetlands, which would act as a buffer for the industrial uses to the south and to the west. Um, if you look at the larger scope of the parcels that Ashley owns, it extends all the way from Manborn down up to Ecors, and also west of Haggerty, several of the parcels are owned by Ashley Crossroads, and that's where there are existing warehouse and distribution center buildings. This parcel is extremely wet and wooded, and the applicant's acquisition of this parcel is to give them the ability to provide setbacks from the west edge of this parcel rather than the east edge of this parcel to any future development on their industrial parcels. The intent is not to build on this parcel. This parcel merely serves to add as a further buffer to the ITC corridor, which is located to its west. The parcel is master planned, M1, which is light industrial, and light industrial typically involves uses such as research and development, warehousing, uh, part sales, uh, uses typically that do not generate much smoke, noise, or other kind of disturbances to abutting single family residential uses. As proposed, the proposal to rezone the parcel to M1 designation is in conformance to the township's master plan. The second one, is it consistent with the basic intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance? Now, the zoning ordinance imposes regulations and restrictions on the location and construction of structures. So merely rezoning a parcel does not give the ability to build on it. In addition to that, when a proposal is submitted, setbacks, green belts, landscaping, utilities, and all the other details also figure in in helping to regulate the use of the land itself. It is the intent of the M1 district to act as a transition between industrial uses and residential uses. That is why it's classified as light industrial. As I previously mentioned, the ITC corridor is approximately 500 feet wide uh, or somewhere around that ballpark, and it is unbuildable. The reason it was designated single family residential was to ensure that it's never built upon. It cannot accommodate residential uses, and there is no intent to ever allow industrial uses on it. So this parcel being rezoned actually adds to that buffer, which is already about 500 feet. The entire width of this parcel technically gets added to the buffer for the single family residential uses that are on the west side of the ITC corridor. The third criteria is, is the capability of the street system to safely and efficiently accommodate the expected traffic from any use of this parcel. The applicant has got no intent to develop this parcel. The other parcels that are owned by the applicant to the east of this site all have frontage onto Van Bonn, and a few concept plans that we have previously seen all include buildings only on those parcels with frontage. This parcel merely serves to act as uh, measurement of setbacks. Our zoning ordinance has got very strict regulations for setbacks between residentially zoned parcels and industrially zoned parcels, which are in the several hundred feet. If the setbacks were to be imposed on the parcel as it currently exists, the applicant would have to create those setbacks from the east end of this parcel. So by rezoning it to M1, even if they don't intend to use it, technically they can measure it from the west end, even though they will not be building on it. At such time when a plan is proposed for development to the east, which does not include this parcel, we will be reviewing for conformance to all of the zoning ordinance regulations. 
The next criteria is the capacity of the township's utilities and services is sufficient to accommodate the uses that would be proposed on this parcel. Since the proposal at this time does not involve any building, we aren't aware of any strain this proposal is going to place on the existing public utilities and services. Have the conditions changed since the zoning ordinance was adopted or was there an error in the zoning ordinance itself which necessitates this rezoning in order to correct it? We do not believe there are any errors. Over the past several years, Van Buren Township has experienced a growth in the industrially zoned parcels. Since we are one of the uniquely placed municipalities that has the I-275 and the I-94 corridors traversing through it. As such, the parcels that abut the freeway do have most of our industrial uses located along those corridors. The subject site is likely to remain in its current undeveloped state. It is our understanding that this parcel has got regulated wetlands on it. So the state regulatory agency, Eagle, is not going to allow the applicant to actually build on it. To take it further, the applicant has indicated they have some intention of placing a conservation easement on this property to ensure that the woodlands and wetlands on this property are preserved in perpetuity. Once a conservation easement is placed on a property, it cannot be built upon. Next criteria is um, if the rezoning requested is compatible with the potential uses that are allowed in the district. In my letter, I have summarized all the uses that would be allowed by right and by special land use in the district. That said, once again, this parcel is not going to be built upon that we know of. So even if it is ever built upon, which I don't think is possible, the uses that are allowed are really in the light industrial range. And considering its size, they would not cause any effects that would be detrimental or harmful to the residential properties that are further down the street. The rezoning is more appropriate than trying to change the R1B district in order to modify the setbacks. That is one of the standard. This rezoning is not being proposed in order to allow for certain uses to go into the parcel. That is, it is not a way around a use variance, which is illegal. So the applicant is requesting the rezoning just to keep with what the master plan allows for the property. This rezoning will also not create an isolated or an incompatible zoning district. This whole area is zoned industrial and rezoning it from R1B to M1 actually creates a whole contiguous industrial district on the south side of Van Bond Road. Based upon our review of the proposal at this time and the fact that it conforms to the master plan, it is our recommendation that the Planning Commission recommend to the Township Board of Trustees rezoning of this parcel from R1B to M1 because it meets the standards numbered 1 through 12 in the McKenna Review Letter dated December 16th of 2022. I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Director Power, do we have someone from the applicant here this evening that wishes to? Dennis Schultz with Ashley Crossroads Distribution Center North LLC is with us. Hi, thank you. Dennis Schultz, uh, I live at 40701 Crabtree Lane. Plymouth, Michigan. Thank you for coming out this evening. Do you have anything you would like to say about uh, the application or you're just no, here I, for you know questions? No, you guys had questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, that will bring us then up to uh, commissioner questions or comments. Does anybody on the commission have any questions or comments for the applicant or for Ms. Christian? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Grant. A couple questions um, for our senior planner. Krishnan, um, <coughs> if it was owned M1, what is the setback requirement off the east boundary there if they were to build on the adjacent east lot? Yes. So the setbacks between an M1 and an R1B district are not, uh, not that onerous. They are probably 50, 75 feet in that range. I don't know the exact number. The challenge comes because of the type of buildings that Ashley Crossroads builds. They build larger buildings with truck docks on them. Mm -hmm. The ordinance requires a distance from a truck dock to a residentially zoned property line of 350 feet. If they put a truck dock on that side. If they put a truck dock on that so side. They also are kind of far off, is it? If they don't put a truck dock, they could take the building closer to the property uh, line. Director Power, would you have the exact setback that they would have to be placed from an R1B? 
They do have a green belt requirement, which I believe is 60 foot wide with double stag staggered evergreen trees. And they could place the building technically at the edge of that green belt. But the challenge mm -hmm. becomes you cannot access that whole side of the building then. So if, if, if it were changed to M1 and they did a lot combination, mm -hmm. how close could they get to the wetland that was defined? And where is that wetland edge? The wetlands on this property are mapped by uh, Eagle, but I would defer to Mr. Schultz. Is the entire property going to be placed under a conservation easement or are portions of it going to be placed? I believe the whole piece of property will be placed under that easement, conservation easement. Eagle typically has a setback requirement from a wetland, which means no structure can be located on it, <coughs> but it can have a drive aisle that goes around the building on stuff like that. Okay, so they plan on putting a, a conservation easement on the entire property. Yes, it, okay. it is a very wet parcel. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Dark, a uh, question for the applicant. Is there a plan to do a property uh, combining? Are you planning on combining that with a larger property? Or is it going to remain a separate parcel? I don't know the answer to that question. I can find out for you and let you know. <laughs> Didn't know if future plans are. Well, it, I mean, he just answered that they were going to conserve the entire property as, as it is. So that you're not combining it if you're doing that. Right. We're not going to build on it. So I meant more from a parcel ID standpoint. So if I may, through the chair. So Director the, I, the image on the right side of that screen is a little bit outdated. Um, that the long, narrow parcels that you see in the, the area that, that has the LI label to the east of this parcel have almost all, if not all of them, have been combined into the, the future phase of development for Ashley. Um, I don't know that, I don't know if this parcel was going to be combined into those, but my understanding is with those, that the bulk of that site being, um, the, the larger site being for potentially distribution center and manufacturing related uses that this would, as Ms. Christian said, be more a, an effective buffer from the residential so that they can build out more of the property that they own there to the east and go closer to those lot lines pushing westward rather than having any specific plans for this parcel. Is the zoning map on the right uh, up to date? The All of the light blue is M1 at this point? So the, uh, the map on the right is actually the future land use map and I believe that is up to date. Uh, but the zoning map, there were recently some rezonings to bring oops, Right. Up until recently, many of those small parcels were zoned R1B, and they've been recently rezoned to match more what's on the screen. If the Planning Commission recollects, a few months ago, Ashley Capital assembled a whole bunch of smaller lots along Van Bonn and along Haggerty that they acquired, and they rezoned all of them from R1B to M1. So those lines really are all consolidated into one big parcel, and they have consolidated several of the parcels up on Van Bonn and along Haggerty, too. Well, but the parcel also, if it would help the Planning Commission understand better, this particular parcel is part of uh, this parcel is also zoned R1B at this present time. When the site plan for Ashley Crossroads Distribution Center North was approved, the Planning Commission allowed Ashley to put their detention pond on the parcel, but had attached a condition saying at no point of time can any development access drives or anything be placed on it, only the detention pond. And I think Ashley has maintained that it's just the detention pond and nothing else. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but through along Van Bourne, how many R1Bs are still there or existing residents still existing east of this property along Van Bourne? I'll try to find an answer to that. If I don't know if you know, Mr. Schultz. I, I don't. I, I believe there are a couple of non-conforming single-family dwellings. The whole area is master planned M1, but there are a few non-conforming single-family dwellings, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I couldn't remember. I I haven't driven that section of Van Bourne in a while, so. Ashley acquired and consolidated a lot of it, but I think a few isolated parcels are there, a couple. A few along Haggerty and a few along Van Bonn Van are left over. Yep. My recollection mm. of it was correct. It was the details <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't quite remember. I, I was down that way a couple weeks ago, and from Haggerty Road, 
westbound there's probably seven or eight houses right there closer to the corner but they're all there in a couple other houses look like they're empty and then if you're going uh, southbound on Haggerty, there's houses like to that church Parking and then there. after that it's there's sparse. one there's yeah. one or two yeah it's yeah. sparse yeah you were great driving that section of Haggerty. Yeah. <laughs> do own the two homes north of the the church do you yeah looks like you're able to find it director powers yes i don't know why this is not projecting right now i'll try to get that fixed but uh there are there's a slew of properties um up until one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parcels east of uh, the one that's under consideration tonight that have already been rezoned to M1, and then there's a handful of parcels that are still along Van Born farther to the east that are zoned R1B, but of course they're master plan for industrial. So the the property immediately to the as, uh, to the east, all of that is owned by you, Ashley Capital. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? I don't think uh, that's what we wanted to do. Any, <laughs> anyway, in, in, the <laughs> uh, in the McKenna letter, um, maybe it's a little bit on the wording side where I see the word intend, you know, intend to place a conservation easement on subject site at the first they will. As part of your recommendation to the Township Board of Trustees, you can mandate that as a condition. And I, in that I believe it's the intent, that's why I don't think that's a problem for the applicant, correct? Correct. Any other, any other comments or questions? Does anybody in the audience this evening wish to speak uh, to this agenda item? Director Powers, or anybody on Zoom regarding this agenda item? No, there is a uh, there are a couple of comments in the chat pertaining to the uh, last case on the agenda tonight that I'll state. Then there are later additions to the public comment from previously. So no no other comments on this. All right, thank you, Director Powers. Is the commission ready to take action on this agenda item? Sarah, Commissioner Dark. This time I would move that the Planning Commission recommend approval to the Township Board of Trustees for the, this is a requested amendment, correct? Zoning, yes. Sir. Yeah, requested requested rezoning. amendment to the zoning ordinance uh, made by the applicant Crossroads Distribution, Distribution Center North LLC on behalf of the owner Frankel Nodals. Uh, Stuart Frankel Development Company to rezone the property located at parcel ID 83006990004000, which is located on the west side of Haggerty Road on the south side of Van Born Road from R1B single family residential district to M1 light industrial uh, based on the analysis subject to any conditions detailed in the letter of staff dated January 4th, 2020. It's a new year, 2023. Uh, the McKenna letter dated December 16th, 2022, uh, with the additional condition that the conservation easement shall be applied. Must, must be applied. Is that, uh, this is a conditional rezoning based on that being applied? Like, uh, if I may, to yes. help have some Please. conversation on the motion, this request was not applied for as a conditional rezoning, and so this may have to be a recommendation. Um, I, I wonder, it, it may be a recommendation uh, that, that the applicant consider, but I don't know that it can be formally conditioned upon that if they didn't uh, apply as a conditional rezoning. Correct, Director Powell. Technically, this is not a conditional rezoning, but since uh, Mr. Schultz offered up at the meeting that there'll be a conservation easement on the property, you can acknowledge that on the record that the applicants offer with placement of a conservation easement on the property. That would be okay, Mr. Schultz? That would be okay. Amending the <laughs> motion <laughs> to indicate uh, that the applicant has uh, intent to place the conservation easement 
as part of the recommendation to the township board. Okay. I seek your support <laughs> in that motion. I support motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Cullen. Any comments or discussion regarding the pending motion? Seeing as none, I have a roll call, please. Sherry Budd? Yes. Amy Kim? Yes. Callie Barr? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Jeff Jar? No. Brian Kelly? Yes. And the uh, request is approved for recommendation. Thank you for coming out this evening. Have a great night. We are on to item number two on the agenda this evening, case number 22-048, Nicole's Little Friends Group Daycare Home Special Land Use Review. Director Powell. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and thank you everybody attending tonight. The use that's considered in this request is again, a group daycare home. Uh, this is a use that's specifically outlined in the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act uh, with specific conditions that uh, municipalities, cities, such as cities and townships should consider. Uh, and so it's with the guidance of the Michigan Zoning Enabling Act and the specific um, special use provisions within that act that we draw our authority in the zoning ordinance. So there's actually, uh, the, the state law in this regard uh, identifies that daycare uses in a limited capacity are to be allowed in residential zoning districts, uh, some permitted by right without special approval and some at a higher threshold of capacity that requires special approval by uh, the township or city. And in this case, that's what's, um, what's being proposed here is the group daycare home um, category or group child care home category, um, which would uh, allow for, um, in the current zoning ordinance that we have, would allow for seven to 12 children with the new changes in state law, that would be up to 14. Uh, so this is not a uh, traditional type of site plan review where you have a fully engineered uh, site plan because that's not tr uh, typically something that we get with a single family residential site. Uh, however, we, we do look for relevant details for the request um, to make sure that we are meeting the standards of state law and the Michigan zoning ordinance. And so just to, by way of providing some context for the site, um, I don't have the, the big map pulled up, but this is Chatsworth Drive, not far here from uh, Township Hall, um, the, the subdivision off of Cork Road. Uh, 45921 uh, Chatsworth, you see that uh, north is kind of oriented down and to the left on this screen. Um, and I did the, uh, the imagery this way just so you can kind of have a comparison with the site plan that was submitted um, to see what the, uh, what the conditions on the ground are on the aerial and then kind of lined up with how the, the plan was laid out in the packet. Um, included in your packet, there's a narrative from the applicant as well as uh, this most recent site plan, which you see in the middle of the screen, along with a previous version of the site plan, which you see on the right side of the screen. Um, what I would like to do is go through um, my findings on, um, first of all, to again, reiterate some of the background on how our local zoning came about, um, but then specific to the local zoning, uh, that reflects the state law, there are certain standards that must be met for a group daycare home uh, within the development standards of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. Um, so the uh, Michigan Zoning Enabling Act has uh, certain provisions for these types of uses. Um, those provisions were reflected in uh, section 5.111 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance pertaining to daycare or childcare group homes. I'll go through those standards and then uh, because this is a special approval use, I will uh, speak to some of the broader special use standards and speak to some of the additional site plan items uh, related to, to this that uh, I caught, I've uh, reviewed in my report. So, and Director Power, just to clarify, so we have item number two, which would be the, the special land use review, and then we also have the next one, which is the request for preliminary and uh, final site plan. Yes, that is right. Thank you. Uh, very good point. So what I would like to do is to just go through all my comments up front, if that's okay with the Planning Commission, and then there would be two separate uh, motions on the two different items if that if that is suitable to the Planning Commission. Thank you, Director Powell. Yep, you're welcome, thank you. The uh, state law requires that daycare homes such as this have uh, separation from other institutional uses. And so one of the first exercises that we had to do in reviewing this application was to verify that this site meets the threshold for separation in those regards. Um, this site is verified to be, at least according to the uh, licensed facilities 
licensed with the state of Michigan, at least 1,500 feet from another licensed group daycare home. It's important to distinguish that because there are actually many um, family daycare homes, which are the one to six uh, children threshold. Um, in a, almost every community has quite a few of those um, that, I, that I was able to search, um, but there are few group daycare homes that meet this higher threshold. So specifically regarding group daycare home, uh, this site is more than 1,500 feet away from any of those. It's also more than 1,500 feet away from adult foster care, small group or large group homes, facilities offering substance abuse treatment and rehabilitation service to seven or more people licensed by the state of Michigan, a community correction center, residence home, halfway house, or a similar facility which houses an inmate population under the jurisdiction of the federal or state department of corrections, daycare centers, and adult daycare centers. All of those types of facilities are greater than 1,500 feet from this uh, site, so we've crossed that threshold. Uh, one of the other standards that the Planning Commission has asked to review and that state law um, speaks to is the, the use of fencing. Uh, in an earlier version of the site plan, there was uh, a development plan that included some fencing. Uh, and I should say that this plan also, um, the ultimate build out that was submitted with this application included a uh, just under 200 square foot uh, solid addition to the home as well as a attached uh, accessory building. Um, and it's beyond those build out areas that the original fencing was proposed. So the Planning Commission, uh, I recommend that the Planning Commission look uh, closely at fencing and um, require a perimeter fence in the rear yard of the site for safety purposes uh, in a manner that's suitable to you on the Planning Commission. Uh, proposed fence materials uh, shall be submitted for review by, uh, the fence materials can be reviewed by staff at a later date. Uh, but the applicant should clarify if they do intend to put the fencing up that was on that earlier plan. That the uh, property maintains, uh, that the, uh, the property is maintained consistent with the visible characteristics of the neighborhood. Uh, primarily what you're looking for here is that it will remain a uh, uh, site that is consistent with the single family surroundings that it, that it lies within. Um, this should not be a site that is evidently a, a major business or a commercial type building. It should be a, a single family home. Um, the types of additions that they're proposing would certainly fall within that threshold in staff's opinion. Uh, being a small addition to the home and an accessory building uh, that's attached to the back, you're looking at the, the full build out on this screen would be uh, just over 2,100 square feet, which is compatible with the floor areas of, of nearby homes. So I believe that that threshold has been met. Um, the hours uh, cannot exceed 16 hours of operation during a 24 hour period. Uh, the applicant has indicated that they will operate from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. so that has been met. Uh, and then finally that the group take care home operator shall provide off street parking for his or her employees in accordance with Article 9 in the ratio of one parking space for each employee. Um, this standard is uh, takes a little bit of um, extra review because there's there's two things that are being uh, spoken to here. One is that there do need to be one space per employee. Um, Article 9 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance also has standards for um, uh, daycare, any daycare or child care uses that include uh, ratios that, uh, that include the one space per employee, additionally one space per each bracket of 10 children cared for. Uh, five stacking spaces. And so with, uh, with the use that's being proposed here with full build out, two employees, uh, t 10 children, uh, sorry, excuse me, two brackets potentially of 10 children, and then five stacking spaces, the ordinance requirement would be five stacking spaces and four um, designated regular off street parking spaces. Now, the Township Zoning Ordinance allows the Planning Commission to make modifications for parking space requirements under Section 9.101J of the Zoning Ordinance. Um, I interpret that the uh, specifically the stacking space requirement um, is, is not necessarily feasible or applicable with a site like this uh, in order to make it consistent with the residential character. Stacking spaces are something you'd usually see with a larger child care or daycare facility. Uh, as, as a part of a, a drop-off or pickup operation. Um, I additionally look to the uh, Institute of Traffic Engineers 
uh, standards for parking spaces to consider whether there's additional um, detail or refinement to the standards we have in our zoning ordinance that may apply. Uh, based on various standards, uh, there's uh, average parking demand for daycare can range from 3.3 spaces uh, per 1,000 square feet of gross floor area, uh, 1.3 spaces per employee, or 0.21 spaces per child. Uh, so when you look at those kinds of uh, figures, you have uh, more of a range of parking spaces, anywhere from uh, three to eight. Uh, so the, the uh, with, with no specificity regarding stacking. So uh, with a site like this, I did uh, coordinate with the applicant to, to come up with a parking layout that I, it would uh, potentially make sense where you have a driveway that's roughly 28 to 30 feet wide. Uh, you would have room for some uh, parallel parking along the side of the driveway along with two designated uh, roughly 10 by 20 spaces that are hard surfaced in front of the home that would allow for um, more permanent parking in that area. Um, I would recommend that those spaces in front of the home would be paved if they're applied. Uh, but this would, would provide a feasible use of the existing driveway and the maneuvering uh, between the parallel spaces in the house uh, that, in staff's opinion, would, would suit the site and provide adequate parking capacity based on uh, the standards of the ITE. But ultimately, I will leave the, um, the parking discussion up to the Planning Commission based on the information from the applicant. And uh, in, in addition, um, I did review the standards that apply to um, the general standards for granting special approval in the zoning ordinance. And uh, I'll, I think I touched on many of the details of my analysis regarding these, but, uh, and you'll hear these again later tonight, but we're looking to make sure that the use can promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner for the persons who will use the proposed land or uh, use or activity for those landowners and residents who are adjacent and for the township as a whole. Uh, that the use is necessary for public convenience at the location, um, that the use is compatible with adjacent uses of land, that it is so designated, uh, so, excuse me, so designed, located, and proposed to be operated that the public health, safety, and welfare will be protected, that the use can be adequately served by public services and facilities without diminishing or adversely uh, affecting public services and facilities to existing land uses in the area, will not cause injury to other property in the neighborhood in which it is to be located, and will consider the natural environment and help conserve natural resources and energy. Um, based on the findings in my report, I do believe this use will uh, meet the criteria for a special approval. Um, I do have, there were some other comments in my report regarding uh, the uh, disposal of waste um, potentially the addition of some, some evergreen landscaping around the children's play area and around uh, the parking areas for additional screening. Um, if there is any signage that's being considered that it will have to meet the standards of Article 11 of the zoning ordinance. And if there's any exterior lighting uh, considered that it should meet the uh, requirements of Section 8.105 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance. Um, so ultimately, I. Uh, do recommend that this use uh, can be approved subject to the uh, review and comfort of the Planning Commission. Uh, there may be some additional information that the Planning Commission would like to see on these plans, um, and I'm sure the applicant can speak to more details of the site. Uh, I will leave the discussion up to the Planning Commission from there, but at a minimum, I recommend that uh, the following conditions are applied to the site that fencing is required around a perimeter area of open space in the rear of the site for safety purposes, that the proposed fence material shall be submitted for review by the planning director prior to, prior to myself, prior to uh, township approval, uh, that a complete building addition or an attached detect, uh, detached accessory building must meet all requirements of uh, Article 7, Chapter 2 of the Zoning Ordinance for accessory structures and uses, uh, if that is proposed as part of this build out. Uh, plans and building elevations must be submitted for review by the planning director prior to issuance of any permits. That the planning commission consider a modification to the minimum required of parking uh, number of parking spaces under section 9.101J of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance to accept the uh, basic seven space parking layout that has been submitted. And that the applicant shall hard surface any parking area with concrete or asphalt. Couple more notes, just uh, this, uh, this whole process that we're undergoing now 
is prerequisite to the state licensure process commencing. So just one thing to be aware of is that this is kind of the first stop. The applicant then, if they get local zoning approval through a special use, in this case, um, they would still have to go through the uh, LARA process for licensure, which would involve a uh, site inspection and some other prerequisites from, from LARA to actually get approved and up and running. Um, and I mentioned the changes in state law that may affect our definitions in the future, but those don't apply uh, right now. So um, with that said, I'll uh, just refer back to the conditions of my report and um, I'm glad to answer any questions from the staff standpoint. We also have Nicole and uh, Robert Burke here, uh, the applicants to speak to their request as well. Thank you, Director Power. Thank you. I'm Nicole Burke. I am at 45921 Chatsworth. Hi, I'm Robert Burke. I reside at the same area, 45921 Chatsworth. Thank you for coming out this evening. No problem. Is there anything you would like to tell us uh, about um, No, just any questions you guys have. Okay. Just thank you again. Uh, any questions or comments from any of the commissioners regarding this item, either for Director Power or for the applicant? Yes. Through the chair. Um, I see in your letter you said that the garage was sinking. Has it been taken down? Has the garage been taken down? The garage has not been taken down. Okay. Um, so I bought the home from my parents. Uh, I've you, lived there. Sorry, could you step up? Thank you. I bought the home from my parents. I've lived there for close to 33 years now. Um, before Menards was built, that whole area was just woods all the way until Belleau Road. Um, once Menards was built, they put the retention ponds in and my, my yard no longer floods. So I'm assuming now that that's taken care of, I can actually take the garage down, relay, oops, sorry, relay the slab, and rebuild the garage. But you haven't taken the ground? Not yet, no. no. Um, okay, I, I wonder about the safety of having that many children in a home where, where the garage Well, is. the garage, I intend on having the garage built prior to it opening. Okay, but you ha you didn't set any any plans for the garage. You only not as of yet, no. No, and you have also not sent. I mean, the only thing you've done is sent the plans for the house, the uh, addition that you want to put to the house. You put that on there. Right. So I assume all of these are going to be done before you open. Correct. You do not have any children now. Yes, we do. Yes. How many do you have now? Um. We have four children. No, I, not yours. Oh, I mean, are, are you keeping daycare? <laughs> are you, I'm sorry. Are, do you have daycare children now? Uh, yes, we do. Um, I only have six kids right now just because that's what I was allowed to have until I get approved for the amount of children that I could have as far as, like, the 14 children that I want to have in the house. Right, so, yes, I, I have six kids currently. Currently. Okay, I, I guess my biggest concern for safety and all with all this building that's going on, I don't want 14 children there. I'm worried about the parking when parents are picking up. Uh, there's a daycare not center not too far from my house and that becomes a real hassle on the road. And I know that Chadsworth is not a wide road and yeah. parking is gonna be a problem if you've got 14 kids trying to pick them all up, yeah. plus your staff that, sh that you have to have to ha when you have that many kids. So, um, I guess I could go with this it, as long as we're guaranteed that nothing, not another child is going to go into your home till it's fixed up. All right, absolutely. Yeah, we, we definitely have plans. We had somebody come out looking at our fence uh, tonight and because the fence that we have right now, it from the tree from where Menards is now, from our property line, that whole fencing is destroyed. So we had someone come out. We just, it's, it's a very slow process of having people come out and giving us estimates. So that's why we really haven't had anything to give other than the house stuff, because that's what we're gonna do. Other stuff that we want done is what you have to have estimated. Right, but like I said, you only put in plans for the house. You didn't put in the plans for the garage I or anything else. I can get, I can get Mr. Powers a plan for the garage as soon as I can. Okay, I just think there needs to be a lot of things in order before we s send this to the board to be approved when there's a lot, to me, there's still a lot of questions that aren't answered. Yeah. 
to the chair. Could I yes, ask for a clarification from the applicant? Um, is there a phasing of currently you're, you're talking about um, you, you're working with an existing building footprint. Is, there's a limit on the number of uh, children you'd, you'd be considering at this time and you're looking at a future phase where you're going up to 14. Is, do I have yeah. that understood correctly? So is there any additional information that you could provide um, kind of outlining the areas that you'd be uh, seeking initial approval for? Um, so it, I'm, I guess, stating that way with the concern with the garage, the garage would obviously have to be one of the first ones to be taken care of in the phase. Um, outside of that, the accessory building and the addition on the house are going to hopefully go up as one phase. Yeah. So I would assume the garage would probably be taken care of first um, as a phase, and then the second phase would be the home and the accessory building. To the chair, what's the timeline for the addition to the house? What, what, where would that set that? And, and I don't know what the regulations are is how much space you have to have in the house for 14 kids. Do you have that? capability without the addition to the house. So I was talking to Dan Powers that I would have to wait until Lara had to come through my home because they're the ones who tell me this footage m with more than six children in my home that I'm allowed to have per right. footage. Right. So once that happens, then I'll know how many kids as far as um, more than six kids in my home. But for now, I can have the six kids. I just can't go above that because I haven't had Lara come out and do any of that yet. Right. So. At what point are you going to increase from six kids to above six kids with regard to your phasing? Are you, are you planning on doing the entire build out before you increase from six? Um. So I was talking to Dan Powers about doing just 10 in my home because I feel like if I were to put 14 kids in my home, that would be a lot to have in a single family home. So I wouldn't do 14. I wouldn't do up to 14 kids until I actually had the building itself. Um, just because there's, I mean, we have my family and then the kids in the home too. So it, I just don't think it would be fair if I did more than what that. Would you, what you would you need for 10? What would you need to do for 10? That's what we would need to wait for Laura for. Yeah. Anything over six, we would need to hear from Laura to be able to tell you exactly the exact number. Yeah, I haven't had, so I had to send in certain things to Laura to get to this point, and um, they told me that they were just waiting on this portion and then they'll come out and do everything as far as like looking at everything and making sure that I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. But I, I can't move forward until we do this portion of it. So that's, I'm kind of stuck right now. You don't know, you don't know how, how many kids you can go above six right now because you're limited to just six. Right. Nope. Based on what you have for square footage right now? Exactly. So what, how are they going to determine how many more you can add? Are they get, they're going to look at this this drawing? Is that how? No, they're so they'll come through the home itself. It's it's not the square footage of the property. It's the square footage inside the home right. and what we have in our home and the um, like items in our home. So that'll take up space basically. So that's that's what they're going to look but, at. But right now you're limited to six. You said exactly. Only because we are unlicensed, we don't have the group daycare regulations so we can't so with what you have now you could end up getting ha having more based on what laura's determination is. exactly right. without building the rest of this right. right so what if they come in and say that yeah you can have 10 are you going to build any of this um the addition on the house still i would still like to go up and um, the building too the accessory sure. building if we can if we can accommodate 10 the accessory building is optional that can be avoided if necessary well i i maybe we're not we're not on the same page <laughs> we, <are. laughs> we, we can use <laughs> oh lord <laughs> starting the accessory building if if i could sir oh, I, I don't i don't know what an amish shed is could you tell me what that is and and then oh, for, and for the and for the benefit of the audience could <laughs> 
could someone tell me what LARA is, too, please? Just expand the acronym. Yes. Who's I can start with that one. It's lic licensing and regulatory affairs. Is that right? Is that right? Okay. So there you go. It's not a person. <laughs> it's all uh, facilities I'm sorry, could like you, this. Evan, yep. could you tell me what, what is an Amish shed? So basically an Amish shed is just something that's pre-built um, that could look like um, basically like a mobile home, like a shell of it. It's so any normal shed that you would see in a yard, um, it's kind of the same thing. It's just it comes pre-built, it sits on a slab, um, you can run power and um, uh, plumbing into it and everything, so. And your intention is to electrify it, plumb it, and make it into heated space? Will it have an entrance uh, from the main house directly into the shed, or is this a shed where yeah, the entrance so is on the outside? Yeah, so I have to have a, uh, so it has to be attached to the house, and it has to have an entrance going to it, and then there has to be an entrance on the outside of it. So right. there will have to be two entrances. That's right. There will be a space coming. If we do build it, it'll, there will be a space coming, or a door coming in from the Amish shed into the house, and then there will be an entrance up here. To the, to the chair, Dan, is there a permit that's needed for that? There would be, yes. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to get a building yeah. permit. The only thing I understand is they may not build, need to build it then. So, if, I that. Yeah. I, if I may, to the chair, provide a, a little bit of direction perhaps. The, um, there is a, a distinction between the, the 1 to 6 and the, the 7 to 12, or uh, with the changing law, it's, it's 1 to 7 and 8 to 14, in my understanding. But um, there are certain parameters that the state asks municipalities to make sure are met and, and has them go through a special approval process. But it, that process is somewhat limited by, by the state law. And the, there's an overarching goal of increasing, uh, you know, allowing for a, a wide a range of um, child care uh, usage uh, throughout the state of Michigan. So that's why it's, it's allowed to be in every municipality um, in these residential districts. So there's a set of criteria um, that would have to be met to basically check that box from the local level to be able to have them apply and get more information from Lara. Um, so it might be helpful to, within that context, say, based on some of the things that uh, I spoke about earlier regarding parking, uh, any of the limits regarding parking that you see, any significant deficiencies with the fencing. Um, if you're uncertain about those types of iting, items right now and you need more information, um, or if you need to perhaps ask if there's a limit that can be placed, until there's an addition, uh, just to feel comfortable with moving forward within those parameters. Uh, you may ask for, for specifics um, just to be on the site plan, either to be submitted to the board or back to the planning commission uh, prior to approval. But there are some limits on um, the kinds of uh, conditions that can be placed. So um, maybe just think in terms of, does it have parking capacity? Uh, does it have fencing that we're comfortable with? And if we don't think there's enough information, you can always ask for more information. Uh, Director Power, the, so we have this designated as two separate agenda items. We have the one for, for the special land use and then one for preliminary and site, uh, preliminary and final. Mm -hmm. What does Laura need to get started so they can start looking at what would even qualify because if we're I'm looking at the site plan and there's a lot of deficiencies Commissioner Bud mentioned a couple issues right off the bat with the garage um, the applicants are looking at it of not even knowing what kind of construction they need but I would like to see a position where we could help them out to get that process started so they can come back and bring us additional information I think it would be appropriate if if the Planning Commission uh, would like to make separate uh, recommendations on the special land use and the site plan uh, because the site plan is something that's actually just a local, not just, but it's a local zoning ordinance requirement that's attached to special land use, all special land uses. So every special land use must have a site plan associated with it under our zoning ordinance. As far as the state's concerned, it's looking for a local approval of the special land use. So um, that I think would be sufficient and I can verify that, but. Um, if you're comfortable moving forward on a special land use recommendation with conditions, we could do that um, and bring back a site plan at a later date. Okay. And, it's un and based on the application and your, your analysis, we have an obligation underneath the Zoning Enabling Act to issue a permit as long as those requirements are met that you do so, correct? Correct. 
you can look if there's any significant deficiencies within those. If there's a deficiency, we can address the deficiency yep. after the applicant to, to correct the deficiencies. But yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes. When <coughs> excuse me, when do you plan on starting the construct de deconstruction as well as the construction of the property? It also kind of depends on uh, the Laura. So we have the ability to start now. Um, we are just we're just we're in the beginning stuck. phase. So <laughs> once once we get a few more answers from a few more people, we'll be able to give you a lot more answers. So well, you could start the de uh, deconstruction of the garage right. currently, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. Which I I'm a foreman of a construction company out of Ann Arbor called Metal Arc Builders. Um, I intend on doing the majority of the work um, myself, including the driveway and pretty much everything. So. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from commissioners? I guess I have uh, one more. Yes. Um, and it's just a general question, and that is this document, this plan document, it shows that the addition of that, um, of the shed in the back, if they, is this holding, would this be holding to them to have to do that if they take this diagram all the way through these approvals? Because they may not need it. It's just a general question. Or is it, could it be a potential addition that they would have? It, you'd have to look at whether it's reasonable to, to require that as part of this approval. Um, I think that in this case, it's more uh, deference to what the state requires for the square footage per, per okay. child and whatever so standards they have. Okay. So I don't think you would necessarily have to uh, uh, tie that to an approval of this. Yes, Commissioner Bell. I don't have any questions, but I, I do have a comment. You've seen some of the other site plans that get submitted to us. They're big, they're professional, they're drawn on uh, <laughs> pen plotters, and uh, I use your network every day. I, I understand entirely. This is this is this is an okay way to submit a site plan for for a residential building. I right. just want to first say that's good. Uh, I would say that what's on it right now. I think we, if if, if you were asking us for a, a preliminary site plan approval, I think we would probably make some recommendations to updating the document one more time, showing things like your doors and your entrances to the, the Amish shed, some notations on the site plan saying w exactly what your phasing plans are. The reason for that is because when you take it to a final site plan review, the site plan submitted becomes part of your contractual obligation. It's part of your permitting process. You can't change it. Right. Uh, so if this was, you know, this is a, a good first site plan submittal, I would think that one more site, uh, some revisions, uh, followed by another uh, preliminary site plan review, possibly even a final site plan approval at that point, would be would be what I would recommend to you. I think one of the other issues that you have is that your special use review, uh, we're a recommending body for those, I believe, which means that it has to go up to the Township Board of Trustees. Right. Right. And they also look at these sort of plans with a critical eye. Uh, and and uh, we usually send them up when they're in a pretty tight state, uh, pr pretty solid. Right. And at this phase for this site plan, I think it I think it could have some more detail added to it showing where the fencing is, showing where the, you know. I yeah. have a question for yes. the fencing, actually. That's why I didn't have them put it on there. So the fencing that I have around that looks like that L shape right there, with the first plan, that's just a temporary fence that I have in the yard right now. It's just one of those. It's a kid's fence. You can yeah. walk up and pick it up and move it. Like my dog can jump over it. <laughs> oh, I, I'll, I'll add to you that the, uh, staff can absolutely help you with that sort of thing. In site plans and in, in the, the larger ones, we often get sheets that show existing conditions and to be removed by phase whatever. Uh, this is phase two, we'll have an addition on the house, and this is our intent for phase three, we'll maybe have the Amish well, shed. both of us were wondering, because the building itself has to be a certain footage away from your fence line. Sure. Now, does the lay fence have to be away from the fence line a certain footage? 
a question to ask our planning staff <laughs> when, when, you, when, when you get to that. I was like, that's why I didn't want to draw it on there, because yeah, I didn't want it to be Sorry. like, because I, I don't know. Yeah, th and that's, that's perfectly valid, and not knowing is why we have you know, staff available to help our residents work on these sort of things. Before you take this up to the township board, I, I would recommend a set of modifications, uh, some more edits to make it crystal clear okay. to the, the township board, which is the granting body. They're the ones that have to make the decision right. so that you don't have to answer questions like, well, where is, you know, where's the door? <laughs> and, <laughs> and it'll make it, it'll, it'll uh, I think it will help you with the process when you get to the next level. So basically just detail it completely. <laughs> I, uh, that, I mean, that's, that's my comment on it. <laughs> that's my understanding. Okay. If right. any other commissioners like to comment. Oh. What is the situation as far as like the play fence or fence connecting to the? Yeah, our, our ordinance is clear with regard to uh, height of fencing and, and type of fencing in the front and rear yard, the, the front as opposed to the side and rear yard. Um, it doesn't speak very specifically to, to the type of temporary fencing you're describing, so we really don't regulate that. If it's temporary and it's part of just a daily operation, that, that can be removed and there's no separation from the neighboring fence that, uh, you know, as long as it's aesthetically consistent, that that's the kind of thing we'd be looking for, but there's no hard requirement on distance from the existing fence. Um, from a from a practical standpoint, Director Power, since we've already had the public hearing regarding this this evening, if the applicant was to go back, make revisions fairly quickly, this is something we could potentially get up um, at a fairly quick meeting for them. I believe so. I'm glad to work with the applicant to to get it squared up. <laughs> so, do we need a uh, request from the applicant to postpone this uh, special use? decision that, that'd be the, f the first question uh, postpone the, the special land use and then potentially postpone the site plan that's that's really up to the is it a, given the feedback that we're providing this evening is this something that you would be willing to take a look at again or? I think so just because I don't want to go in there and get denied and <laughs> then have to do it all over again yeah. <laughs> Do we have a motion to uh, table this agenda item and postpone the applicant's request? I, I want to do it two separate ones. Well, the first one will be uh, on item number two, case 22048, the special land use request. Mr. Chair, I would move to postpone uh, this, this item until such time as the applicant is able to update the site plan for additional review. Have support? Support. Good. I have a motion by Commissioner Jark, mo mo support by Commissioner Cullen. Do you have any comments or discussion from any of the members? Okay. I have roll call, please. Kelly Barr? Yes. 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 Sherry Budd? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. And as to item number three, case 22048, uh, the pre preliminary and final site plan review. I have a motion to um, table that item as well. Mr. Chair, I move to postpone that item until such time as the applicant is able to provide more detail on the site plan to provide for an additional preliminary site plan review. Support. A motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Grant. Any comments or discussion regarding the motion? Seeing as none, can I have a roll call, please? Sherry Budd? Yes. Bernie Grant? Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. And so you're uh, you're adjourned for a little bit. We've got some work, um, and if kind of directed staff is here that can help and <laughs> help walk through the process. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for your patience. Look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, we are on to item number four. Case 22059, Belleville Yacht Club Marina Special Approval. Um, as I indicated earlier in the public hearing, prior to opening this item up and going into presentation or anything else, um, I indicated that um, I am also a member of the BYC. 
I believe that I would have a conflict to be sitting on this and sitting over this item and discussing it this evening. Um, however, I have to make a request of the other board to make that decision. I will explain to them my reasoning for it and then the board can decide whether or not I'm gonna sit. It's not something that I have the authority to myself to just determine that I have a problem. So um, my reasoning for requesting a recusal this evening is one that I am a BYC member. Secondly, I am also a lake owner or a lake uh, front owner and I have a boat and there's a high probability that I would be using any dock at this facility. So I think I have a direct uh, conflict with ruling on a B dock application that is up for the future. Madam Chair, I make a motion that Brian Kelly be recused from this item. Motion by Commissioner Bud, support by Commissioner Barr. Discussion of the motion. Discussion of the motion. To clarify your reasoning, sir, it is that, not that you're a lakefront owner, it's that you are a member of the club and you live on the lake, which means you drive your boat to Correct. the docks under question. Thank you for clarifying. Correct. That's, I just wanna make sure I understood your logic, sir. <laughs> Everyone in support of the motion for me to recuse myself on this item number. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. And as I am being recused from this agenda item, uh, Vice Chair Jar will be taking over in my position. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend that you wait in the hallway, please. And if you would, please wait around. We do need you for general discussion and updates. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the meeting. And the annual report. And the annual <laughs> report, absolutely, and the annual report. <laughs> Wonderful. Mr. Chair, uh, Acting Chair, yes, I just have a, another housekeeping comment. I did have a comment in the chat regarding the angle of the Zoom uh, screen. The Zoom screen that we have tonight is uh, sort of handled up here at the at the podium or at the at the top and uh the the comment was specifically regarding being able to see the presentation screen um my understanding is this is being broadcast on youtube or it should be um so you might try youtube to see if you can get uh they, they kind of pan around to the different angles and they might show the screen more directly than we can on the zoom so you might try that if you're watching remotely you can still be on the Zoom, but you might try going to YouTube to get a better view of what's on the screen. Just a kind of a housekeeping comment. But thank you for the comment. Thank you, Director Power. This brings us to item number four, case 22-059, Belleville Yacht Club Marina Special Approval, in which a request by Belleville Yacht Club for site plan review and special approval to construct a marina as defined under section 3.120B15 of the Van Buren Township Zoning Ordinance, including two dock structures, each containing a single dock stem with, I have a redaction that says uh, up to four connecting docks. The site is zoned Belleville Lake Shoreline District B, non-single family residential, DLB, and the adjacent upland parcel is zoned R1C, single family residential. Marinas are a use uh, that requires special approval in the BLB district, and the use requires a public hearing. This hearing's being held, we had the public hearing, I'm sorry, uh, in accordance with that. Um, yep, so the location of the project is proposed to be located in Township Lake property adjacent to 831 East Huron River Drive, parcel ID 8308899005000 on the north side of East Huron River Drive between Loza Lane and Evelyn Court. A few action items uh, in, in accordance with this agenda. The first of which is the presentation by township staff. Yes. Mark, please. Th thank you, Mr. Chair. And I might ask again the, the Planning Commission if it's okay with you. Um, I'll give all of my comments up front. And then there are two different action items that are on the agenda tonight one pertaining to the special approval recommendation to the Board of Trustees, and one pertaining to a site plan. And so if you don't mind, I will go through my comments because they kind of intermingle between those two items. You'll have two different actions regarding those, just like with the last case. Do the commissioners have any objection? No. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, as the chair said, this is a uh, request for 
a uh, site plan review and special approval to construct a marina as defined under section 3.120 B15 of the Van Buren Township zoning ordinance. Uh, this first image I'll have on the screen, which is also what is on the, the large poster board that the applicant brought, um, shows the, the details of the project. Um, and the, uh, the project involves the construction of uh, two dock structures with a total length of 120 feet. Each dock stem will contain a main stem, which is four feet wide, along with four perpendicular docks, which are four feet wide by 24 feet long. So those are those four uh, smaller structures that you see um, kind of angling in from the docks toward the, the label for Belleville Lake. Uh, I'll, I'll refer back to this image as much as we need to, and I'm sure the applicant can do the same when they give their presentation. Um, but I would like to give uh, a little bit of more spatial orientation to the site. The site is located at 831 East Huron River Drive. Uh, it, the upland site at 831 East Huron River Drive is zoned R1C, single family residential district. Um, I can use this image. I have this actually in a Google Earth type of platform so we can kind of zoom around the site. But this is uh, the best attempt I could give at, at kind of rubber sheeting the site onto the actual parcel fabric of this parcel to show you kind of that furthest extent of the docks. Um, and you can just kind of barely make it out on this image, but I'll show it um, closer up as, as needed in this meeting. Um, but people are probably familiar with this site um, on, uh, on Eastern River Drive. I want to explain the zoning a little bit more in detail. I think it may be important to understand um, the way that the Belleville Lake Shoreline District's ordinance or section 3.120 of the Van Buren Township ordinance uh, is written. There are a set of regulations specific to the area um, that's called the Township Lake property, which is um, what's commonly understood to be Belleville Lake. The bottom land of that lake is owned by Van Buren Township. And so it, it falls under a distinct set of regulations. Um, it is still zoned. Uh, the way that it's zoned is by proximity to the land use that is associated with the parcel uh, adjacent to it upland. So um, while the upland parcel is zoned R1C, uh, it contains a use that's defined as a private club that is other than single family residential. Because that use is other than single family residential dwelling, uh, the adjacent use in the water, regardless of the upland zoning being single family residential, is going to fall into what's called BLB, which is a non-commercial, or not, uh, excuse me, non-residential zoning. So you have different zoning districts on the land, different zoning districts in the lake, and uh, in this case, the zoning district in the lake that pertains to this property is BLB, uh, which was stated earlier uh, as Belleville Lake Shoreline District B, non-single family residential. The marina use is uh, permitted by special approval in the BLB district. Um, and just briefly, I'll recount the, the definition as it appears in our zoning ordinance. Marina means a facility that is owned or operated by an entity, extends into or over an inland lake or stream, and offers service to the public or members of the marina for docking, loading, or other servicing of recreational watercraft. This definition more closely aligns with what's being proposed than a similar use, which is considered a um, non-commercial multi-docking facility. And I mention that because um, this particular use, as, as I'm sure may be a theme of the discussion tonight, is not really a conventional marina. It's not uh, like Sandy's, for example, where you have um, regular servicing of watercraft, uh, kind of a service-based commercial use. It is specifically uh, a limited application of this marina definition to uh, the use by the club that owns the site. And it is not for um, servicing of boats, fueling of boats. Uh, it is, is a more limited application. However, it is technically meeting this definition under the township zoning ordinance. Um, marinas are also regulated, I'll just mention briefly, by the state of Michigan, um, natural, uh, under the State of Michigan Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, which is also referred to as NARIPA. And so uh, the approval of the marina is regulated by the State of Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, or EGLE. Uh, for some brief background on the, the, case, the uh, case before you tonight, um, previously there were floating dock structures, which you've seen on the screen. Uh, the, uh, the statement from the applicant is that these accommodate uh, up to 24 watercraft. We, we should get clarification 
on uh, how, how many watercraft those supported. Um, but the previous structures were removed and, and partially uh, reconstructed uh, with new posts. Um, there was a code enforcement action and uh, an item in court related to this. And, and then there was a, a ticket that was dismissed and uh, following this action, the applicant was enabled to work with the township toward a valid uh, path of zoning approval. Um, just to provide some context for uh, where we are, uh, the township has had a lot of cooperation from the applicant on this item. Uh, there uh, was, again, the ability for the applicant to seek a valid path of zoning approval for what they want to do. Um, at first, a text amendment to the zoning ordinance was considered because part of the application, as you'll see, is that the dock structures are longer than the permitted 40 feet uh, length into the lake. Um, upon further review, it was determined that a more uh, specific set of circumstances applied to this site, and really a, a general ordinance is not something that was found to be feasible by the staff or the applicant. Uh, and so this, this case was routed more toward a uh, special exception rather than an ordinance amendment for the dock length item specifically. Uh, regardless of, of those things, uh, the replacement of the existing docks and the, the reconstruction and expansion also prompts the review for uh, a new, essentially a new use as a marina, which is why we are here tonight. We're here to review generally the marina use and the site plan associated with it. Um, with the, the the standards that apply to this entire review are, are pulled from that Belleville Lake Shoreline District's ordinance. Um, and so there are specific requirements that I'll kind of summarize in my remaining slides from that ordinance. Uh, and, and so the first set of criteria are that there's a complete application uh, per section 3.120 F2. Um, there is a required application form, site plan, survey, um, plans, elevations, and sections with dimensions. Um, there's more information on that on the plan that you see on the big uh, poster board as well as on the previous slide. Um, there are material and aesthetic requirements, uh, and I do have as one of my conditions in this uh, report that the dock service um, should be reviewed by the Planning Commission. Um, and I understand there's uh, two, two inch by six inch treated lumber wood uh, decking and a uh, womanized uh, finish that the applicant has described, um, and they can speak more to the, deck the dock material. Um, one of the other uh, items is, is uh, specific to the, the dock length um, that, that is, has to be shown on the plans. And again, this is something that requires a special exception because the applicant is seeking uh, for the dock to be greater than 40 feet in length um, because this additional dock length has been requested, the water depth at the farthest point of projection must be provided with this application. Uh, upon further clarification from the applicant that was provided, there is a section drawing at the bottom of your site plan that shows a 14 foot depth. Um, that is not a general section. That's actually, uh, according to the applicant, the, the depth at that farthest point. So that's meant to be the depth at the farthest point as measured. So. That, um, that information has been provided at the, at the furthest depth, um, the average depth is 14 feet. Uh, there has to be a description of the upland shoreland features and the, uh, the, the club building, the pool, and the accessory building are shown on that plan. Uh, and any description of shoreline stabilization has to be provided as well. Um, and th there is no additional shoreline stabilization that's required. Um, the applicant has indicated that they have made application to EGLE. Um, a completed application for review by EGLE, uh, and if required by FERC, which uh, will be required, must be provided prior to full township lakeshore authorization being granted. So there's still a lakeshore authorization that, that follows this process and prior to, prior to construction of the docks. Um, those, those other agency approvals, of course, must be obtained. Um, and then we also request uh, with applications under the Lakeshore Ordinance, um, the uh, Belleville Lake Shoreline District Ordinance, that a description of the proposed use uh, is included, um, including the nature of the proposed use and other general information describing the use. Uh, and this is pulled from our regular uh, site plan review requirements. Now the use is pretty well described in the details of the plan. You can tell that it's for, for dockage of boats. Um, a use statement is something that would be helpful, I think, just to clarify who's using the docks, 
uh, you know, for what purpose, uh, whether there's overnight dockage, uh, a brief paragraph summary would, would be helpful on this plan. So I have a condition that uh, just an overall use description should be on the plan. Uh, we, as reviewing special approvals in the Belleville Lake Shoreline District, um, there are approval criteria that must be considered that are both um, general based on the standards of 12.306 of the zoning ordinance for special land uses as were applied to the previous request on tonight's agenda. Um, and then there are some specific uses re uh, related to the, uh, the dockage and the, the marina that I'll go over as well. Um, the, I'll, I'll try to summarize these as best I can briefly. Um, the first is that the proposed use can promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner for those persons who will use the proposed land use or activity, for those landowners and residents who are adjacent, and for the township as a whole. Uh, the site's impact in relation to its immediate neighbors and the, the township property at large um, should be considered by the Planning Commission when, uh, when this request is, uh, when this criterion is measured. Um, the staff recognizes the uh, concerns that were raised about potential precedent setting. Um, I, and and that, to that regard, you're, you're looking at the potential, potential uh, proliferation of boating on the lake and, and the potential impact. Um, however, this site is uniquely situated in a way that is unlikely to be replicated elsewhere in the township. Um, most of the property along Belleville Lake is zoned and planned uh, and, and currently developed as single family residential. Um, and the majority of these properties would not be suitable for this type of use. Um, and so in, in measuring that first criterion, which is more of a general one, um, having this use at this site would not necessarily impair the overall quality of the lake if it's, if it's not precedent setting for, for the proliferation of this type of activity and, and over, uh, over proliferation of boating. Um, the second criterion is that this is necessary, necessary for the pu public convenience at that location. Uh, I do wanna point out that this is a specific use that provides uh, distinct services for its members um, in providing boating access and education. Uh, and I did note that there's a um, significant portion of the township that does not um, have lake access by no means does this site provide access to the entire township. That is, that is definitely not the case. However, it does provide lake access to some of its members who do not otherwise have access to the lake and it provides uh, educational opportunities and, and boating access for, for people from throughout the township and elsewhere. Um, so to, to zero back in on that criterion, um, for the public convenience at that location, uh, based on its distinct um, and, and special uh, service, uh, I do think that that criterion has been met because it, it, it's a unique use that provides a distinct uh, service for, for its members in the township. Um, whether it's compatible with adjacent uses of land, um, I will note that the site maintains, uh, well, I guess what I first wanna say is that we're looking to make sure this is compatible with its neighboring properties, of course. So adjacent uses of land to the east and west as well as across the lake. Um, this is where I'd like to point to uh, some dimensions uh, of the, the proposed marina site. The current dock configuration or the, the previous docks that have been there uh, fall within zero and five feet of the setback to their, their side lake lot lines. This plan actually increases the uh, conformity with the zoning ordinance requirements by uh, increasing that side setback to 12 feet. Um, so in that regard, we're looking at actually increased riparian access to the neighboring property owners. Um, and that, that speaks to its compatibility with those sites. Uh, the docks will also be roughly 162 feet from the DNR boat launch to the west and 75 feet from the boathouse to the east, um, as well as 762 feet at their furthest extent, uh, roughly, this is roughly measured on, on Google Earth, um, from the adjacent uh, opposite shoreline. So um, in staff's interpretation, there is compatibility with the adjacent uses of land. Um, this is an established use that the dockage that they're proposing with this marina would, would have uh, sufficient setbacks and separation. The fourth uh, criterion here is that the marina is so designed, located, and proposed to be operated that the public health, safety, and welfare are protected. Um, 
this speaks to some of the other standards that I've uh, brought up earlier. Um, but I also will mention just these are the kinds of things that uh, the other agencies that review marinas or dockage more in depth, like Eagle, will lo look at more closely. So um, to the extent that this will also be reviewed by Eagle and, and FERC, uh, I believe that there's adequate uh, assurance that this will protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Uh, that the site can be adequately served by public services and facilities without diminishing or adversely affecting public services and facilities. Um, the site will be adequately served by public services and facilities. There's public uh, utilities and services available to the site uh, and access to the site for first responders. That the site will not cause injury to other properties in the neighborhood in which it is uh, to be located. Uh, again, going back to the fact that there is a sufficient setback on the sides and that this will fall under the purview of EGLE uh, to, to review it more in depth. Um, I do believe that this criterion has been met. Um, and that there, the site, um, that the Planning Commission must consider the natural environment and help conserve natural resources and energy. Uh, this site will involve a boating use. Um, it's not indicated to be uh, uh, Intensive boating activity, the applicant has indicated there will be no fueling and no boat repair. Um, so it's essentially moorage and dockage, uh, mooring and dockage of boating. Um, so I believe that the, the protections to the natural environment in those regards have been established. Um, I will re-emphasize that the Planning Commission should consider a condition that there will be no uh, fueling. It's kind of redundant because that has been offered by the applicant, but I just want to reiterate that point. Moving on to the um, specific criteria for uh, the Belleville Lake shoreline district approval process. Um, the applicant needs to demonstrate that uh, compliance with all the development standards have been met, which I will go over what those are, um, that the uh, structures will not inter unreasonably interfere with the adjacent property owners or public's use and enjoyment. Um, these, uh, I've, I've mentioned previously the, the setbacks, uh, I will also mention that this provides, the site provides a benefit to its members, uh, again, not necessarily the whole township, but to its members who include residents from various um, areas within Van Buren Township without significantly impacting adjacent property owners uh, or the public use and enjoyment. Um, the structures will not create a risk to public health, safety, and welfare of persons who use the Belleville Lake or interfere with safe navigation on the lake. And I know there have been some comments about the safety aspect and some of the features that could be installed that the Planning Commission may um, speak to, but I do believe this criterion can be met. The structures must be constructed of materials which will not impair the water quality, water flow, or water levels of Belleville Lake. Um, this will be reviewed by EGLE, uh, but it is also the purview of the Planning Commission to verify that. To the extent feasible, the structures shall protect and enhance the scenic, recreational, environmental quality of Belleville Lake. Uh, the location of the facilities shall be such that they will not create a negative visual impact for the general public. The marinas and non-commercial docking facilities uh, shall be separated from one another to avoid overcrowding and excess boat traffic. Um, and this is one that's more specific to the marina use. Um, I did include in the packet some uh, materials that show um, existing somewhat comparable facilities in Van Buren Township. Uh, and some other communities that have multi-docking or marina facilities, um, not necessarily as an apples to apples comparison with this type of layout, but just to show um, some context for spacing of, of marinas and multi-docking facilities. Um, it's really up to the Planning Commission to determine whether this site is, uh, is sufficiently spaced from other um, marinas or multi-docking facilities, but I do note that it is 1.4 miles from Sandy's Marina, which is, is probably the most significant marina in the township. Um, so it is reasonably separated from that, that use. And it is also significantly uh, distant from the Harbor Club. A consideration shall be given to maintaining consistency with the upland zoning and land use. Um, in this case, the marina use fits well with the upland use, which is a nonprofit or private club. Uh, and the stated purpose of the Belleville Yacht Club, according to their website, um, is includes to create a community of boat owners and watercraft enthusiasts through events and social gatherings and to induct new boaters through youth and family programs uh, to teach the basics of safe boating, uh, et cetera. So there's a very clear um, 
mission and service to this particular use that, that w works well with the marina. Uh, the uses shall be consistent with the primary goal of permitting reasonable use by lake owners, lake residents and landowners. Um, the approved uses at the marina will be consistent with this, with this goal. Uh, the final set of things I'll go over here, and I, I do apologize for the length, but this is a, a very um, detailed ordinance to, to make sure there's quality development on the lake. Uh, but there are specific Belleville Lake Shoreline District development regulations that also apply. Uh, and in most of these regards, these, these requirements have been just added to the plans as notes and commitments. Um, so these have been primarily addressed. So. Um, Lack of boat lifts, cradles, or hoists has been noted. Uh, no buildings or covered structures being on the township lake property has been noted. Compliance with uh, certain other standards in this ordinance. Uh, no, no private ramps or launches intended for um, access to the lake for multiple non-abutting uh, back lots of a subdivision or other residential properties. No signs will be built other than those approved by the township and necessary for safety. Um, the uh, limiting, limiting the watercraft docks, boats, and watercraft storage uh, uh, for the sole use and enjoyment of the abutting frontage lot owners, lessees, renters, and their invited guests. Um, the facilities are installed uh, here under are subject to the terms of the FERC license, that no dock will be placed or maintained in a location where it prevent, presents a hazard to navigation um, or create a risk that boats will run aground while attempting to moor. Uh, that no person will instock, install or maintain a dock except on shoreline or bottom lands abutting a frontage in which they have an ownership interest. Um, that all docks will be po positioned perp perpendicular to the shore and in a manner that does not unreasonably encroach on the use and enjoyment of the lake. Um, the commitment to having no dry, dry docks or dry land storage. Um, no uh, launching, storing, mooring, or docking of boats within five feet of the side lot lines. Uh, that all docks will be kept in good repair, that the marina will comply with all applicable construction standards and permit requirements of Eagle, that all docks, hoists, and similar structures installed shall be co uh, under common ownership and of a common design so as to create a unified appearance at the site. Um, there will be no fueling at this marina. Um, I will mention one of the development standards that requires some additional uh, uh, review is that there there is relief sought from Section 3.120 D5, which is that no dock or any other structure shall extend more than 40 feet into the lake, uh, measured perpendicularly from the shoreline and less greater length is required to reach a depth of three feet and then no further than necessary to reach such depth. So as you know, this is a, a request for, uh, there's a request for a special exception from that standard that's before the BZA. Um, the final dimensional requirement that I'll speak to is the uh, Section 3.120 D6 of the zoning ordinance um, typically limits the, the coverage of the, the shoreline frontage to 60%. Um, however, the Planning Commission is authorized to approve uh, the watercraft to extend up to across up to 100% of the lake frontage as deemed appropriate and subject to special approval. In this case, the docks as presented tonight will occupy 108 of the 132 feet of property um, staff finds this to be reasonable. It's roughly 82% of the lake frontage. Um, the Planning Commission would just have to find that, it, that that's acceptable as part of any approval as well. Um, there are some other details that, that will feed into uh, making sure that the, the site plan is um, uh, sufficiently adequate by the time of construction uh, that will be reviewed throughout this process. Um, the, uh, the placement the exact dimensions of the slips um, and the, the placement of the uh, ladders and other safety equipment, uh, those will all have to be details that will be provided. Based on the drawings that have been issued, um, I do recommend conditional approval of the plan dated January 6, 2023, um, based on meeting the criteria of uh, for special approval under the Belleville Lake Shoreline Districts Ordinance and um, the Van Buren Township uh, special land use provisions uh, subject to the following conditions. Um, that the water depth at the farthest point of projection must be provided. It has been provided, so that condition has been met. 
a completed application for review by Eagle and as required by FERC must be provided prior to full township lakeshore authorization being granted. Uh, the construction being subject to any necessary approvals from Eagle and FERC. Uh, that there is a use description on the plans. That there is the site is not used for fueling. That special approval must be obtained from the Township Board of Trustees and a special exception to section 3.120 D5 must be obtained from the Van Buren Township BZA. That the use of land shall otherwise comply with uh, Article 6 of Chapter 42 of the Van Buren Township Code of Ordinances and that, uh, the that the Planning Commission uh, find, in addition to staff, that roughly 81.8% 80, of the lake frontage, 81.8% of the lake frontage being uh, acceptable coverage by the docks uh, as part of the approval, and that the dock surface material is subject to Planning Commission review. Um, I do believe that this uh, application can be recommended for a conditional site plan and special land use approval. Uh, that being said, I will open this up to uh, the Planning Commission to entertain comments from the applicant. Uh, any further questions from myself? And uh, of course, the decision is yours to uh, work through both of those requested actions tonight. Thank you, Director Power. At this time, I would request uh, the applicant to come to the podium. You have a presentation. Thank you for considering our uh, request. I'm Scott Jones. I reside at 11696 Juniper Drive. Um, just wanted to explain to you a little bit of our use. So last night was about the, the variance request, and, and tonight is about the uh, request to construct a marina. Um, so essentially for us, it, it's a parking lot for boats. So we have a parking lot on land for cars to come to the club. This would allow for our members to come and go by boat and, uh, and park at the club. So it's really our members, guests of members. Uh, we do have reciprocating rights. We're in Yacht Clubs of America, so anybody that's associated with another yacht club that participates uh, has full access to our club as well. Um, so this would allow them to come on their boat, uh, spend the day, use the pool, um, uh, take uh, the benefit of our, our facilities, and then um, return home by boat or pull their boat out of the lake. Uh, we do not rent docks out, so um, that it's not um, our intention. Uh, we do allow members of the club that do not live on the lake to, to park boats there. Um, maybe over a weekend or three or four days, they can sign out those docks uh, if they want to drop their boat in on Thursday and pull it out on a Monday or something. So uh, we do allow that. Uh, we only allow that if they do not live on the lake. So it uh, allows members that maybe commute from um, other areas in, within Van Buren Township or another community to have access uh, to the lake. Um, the other, so that's the day-to-day -day use of the docks 98% of the time. About five or six times a year we have major events at the club where it's kind of a platform uh, to support those uh, events. Uh, first one's coming up in February, so we do a polar plunge every year uh, for Special Olympics. We're one of the largest ones in the state now uh, for that activity, and uh, we um, have jumpers go there. Van Buren Township has the dive team there. They're in the water. They use our docks as a platform uh, uh, for that activity. Um, past that in the spring, we have three activities. Um, we have um, youth boater permit uh, classes, so Every year with uh, the help of uh, Wayne County and Van Buren Township Marine Patrol, we offer uh, classes and a permitting process for anybody that wants to apply for it. It's usually 14, 15 year olds that are looking to get their boater safety permit. So uh, that's open to the public. We also this year are bringing the American Power Boat Association back to the lake. So um, we're calling it Thrill in the Ville and uh, it's during Lake Fest. So uh, hydroplanes had raced here uh, back in the 70s, and uh, they're um, coming back to the lake. And that's another one well coordinated with Van Buren Township, City of Belleville, um, actually uh, DNR and Eagle uh, to, to allow us to um, make that happen. July 4th, huge for us, uh, uh, the fireworks. So um, we have seven or 800 people on property for that event. Uh, kind of two sub clubs have come out of the BYC that support that. We have Michigan Fireworks Club, 
So it's a group of uh, members that have gotten licenses to build and launch fireworks, and so we put those shows on ourselves as well. We've taken over the Winterfest and uh, do all those activities. And then we have a group called the Dive Dogs that uh, support, um, it's, we do diving classes at the club and training. We have a certified uh, dive trainer that's a member. And then they also do all the mooring of the barges for the fireworks and, and do a lot of activities around the lake to, um, with the dive group. Late in July, we have our poker run, big event. Um, and then uh, new programs we're um, adding to our club are a swim class in the pool and uh, sailing classes for uh, youth again. So those are really the, so we have the daily use and then we have major use for events. Uh, it was talked about the materials. So we've, the surface of the docks are currently two by six treated womanized lumber. And that would be our intent, um, you know, as we complete the project is to keep that consistent. So we have identified that on the drawing. Um, there is some question, uh, Eagle has bounced back and forth whether womanized is an acceptable use over water. So um, depending on their approval, that may need to be changed uh, to, to meet their requirement. We have applied for um, an EGLE permit. It's a, called a joint use permit, so they use one application form for the whole permitting process. We fall under the marina category of that. So their print, their, they range very much in cost. So if a homeowner's just putting a boat lift in, they're gonna have to apply for a $500 permit. It's on the same form where we apply for a marina permit that's $4,000. So. Um, they just happen to use the exact same form for all their permitting uh, processes. And ours is actually called a marine, uh, marine and mooring facility permit with Eagle. Um, we intend to park 22 boats. We had 24. Um, we have 300 members in the club, so it's you know between 5 and 10% of our membership could be accommodated with the uh, 22 docks. So the in... Uh, the fingers, there's four fingers proposed per side, would be 16 of the boats and then three parallel park on the outer do docks. Uh, most of the boats, um, the pontoons that our members have are 23 to 28 feet long, um, eight feet wide is the standard. And uh, really that's, you know, that's our, our request. So open, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. And thanks for your consideration. <coughs> Mr. Jones, I uh, for the we gave the director power a courtesy to present his uh, use uh, his his presentation for the use item uh, at the same time that he gave his presentation for the um, for the site plan review. I was wondering if the commission would like to extend the same courtesy, or if you have a separate presentation, or if that was the whole presentation. Would the board be interested in? in allowing Mr. Jones to do both if he has more to present. Oh, absolutely. Mr. Jones? Yeah, so the site plan portion of it would be the two 120-foot um, uh, piers, and um, the docks are actually 20 foot from the interface, so they're 24 if you go all the way across it, but that would include the four-foot uh, pier deck going out. So the extensions, that leaves us 60 feet in the middle for navigation of boats, so um, we left 60 feet there to accommodate if you had a 30 foot boat parked on um, each side, uh, you would have, um, you'd take up another uh, 10 feet of that, so you'd have 50 feet down the center, essentially to bring a boat in, make your way around and park at one of the inner docks. The first two are spaced out 28 feet each, and uh, that's because as the boats would be stacked on the outer piers, it would take more room to get around them and, and turn your boat to a park on one of the inner piers. So essentially, that um, 24 foot would allow for uh, two six foot or two eight foot boats, 16 feet tied up, and then uh, six feet be of uh, space between them. You're not tied directly tight to the dock. Usually, uh, you put a fender out. That fender separates you from the dock, and then you'd have separation between the two boats. So we'd have um, boats parked on, on both sides of the piers going inward to the property line. Uh, this seawall is existing, so there's no proposed changes to the seawall. Um, we, uh, um, and then this really serves as access to the upland um, lot, which is where our clubhouse, we have the pool. Um, you can see the square in the center there. 
the tiki bar we refer to is on the corner. Um, we angled that tiki bar to try to prevent it from being straight into our neighbor's um, alignment. That's, that's why that structure has that uh, bit of an angle to it. And as the existing structure when we acquired the property is a 12,500 square foot, the old moose, essentially. Um, we acquired it in 2009. So nothing's really changing on the upland lot. All the um, proposed work is over the water and, you know, the, the dock structures. That's thank you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. That takes us to agenda item C, planning commission discussion. I will open for any commissioner who has uh, questions for the presenters this evening or comments? Oh, cold. <laughs> Do I hear any, anyone uh, have any comments or discussions? Yes, Commissioner. I have a, a, one question with regard to the uh, dock and then I sort of have a question comment. So the first one is how many boats will that accommodate? 22, 22 when completed, as proposed. What the arrangement is. Okay, so uh, two, four, six, eight. Okay. Three parallel parked on the pier. That so was going to be my next question is when you hit peak traffic or are doing the fireworks, are you going to be double stacking boats? Are you going to be? No, for the fireworks, we actually have to clear the docks. So um, the we have to maintain a, a perimeter. So there's no docking. We just use the dock as a viewing platform. It's really the launch platform for the fireworks team. So they're located there. Okay, but you stay outside from the fire. They do, and the police busy, patrols. On a super busy day that everybody wants to get to the club, and it, I mean, what will happen when you fill all your slips up to the maximum? Will you turn people away, or? We do. We've, um, you know, we've, we rarely are um, um, completely full. We've not operated with this full configuration for a long time, so. Um, but, yeah, if there's no spots available, people would turn away or. It most, there's a lot of times too people take a boat back to their house and then get on somebody else's boat because a pontoon boat can accommodate more people, so. So the way you have it set up, you will have boats maneuvering on the outside of the docks to, to get parallel into the dock. Yeah, and that's really. Zero boats would be interesting on how that would work. Absolutely, so that's how we ended up with this configuration. So through the process of working with Eagle so far, they did not like the T-Dock configuration. We had originally proposed the um, T-Docks and with boat parking on both sides of the piers going out. Mm -hmm. They did not like that because at Stan Prezan, they were zero to five feet off of the property line. Sorry. So anybody approaching those docks would have to cover, go past our neighbor's lot line or approach from our neighbor's property. So that's what led us to this type of configuration where we only have parallel parking on the outsides instead of coming in sideways. So the other thing I, d I did hear was, you know, from a lot of residents basically you repetitively concerned about safety, boat safety, traffic safety, similar to how when there's a lot of development along main roads, there's traffic impact studies. Is there any type of marine traffic, boating safety impact study that can be done to assure people that have concerns about safety, that that can be eliminated from the study? I, I don't, I'm not aware of any studies, but I know we will have to meet all the requirements for EGLE to apply do to they, get the permit. Do they apply, do they do a study or conduct a study or have any type of guidelines or requirements that basically would focus on this site specifically that could alleviate everyone's concerns? I know they will focus on the site specifically. I don't know what their criteria for that will be. Right, We're right. using a company called uh, King Engineering, so they're a third party that's representing us for that process. They may have more knowledge on that, but I do not. So I guess the question is, is there any way that a study could be done to alleviate the safety concerns? Because at this point, I don't know if anybody's even addressed them at all with regard to the design of this dock and the impact that this may have on a very narrow portion of the lake compared to the rest of the lake. Yeah, we have said we'll, we'll light the docks. That, I mean, yeah, one of the major concern was at night to, to be aware that they're there. Um, I mean, I don't know enough about, <coughs> you know, no-wake zones, offsets and buoys and stuff like that, but I've heard 
concerns about the narrowing of the lake based on low weight zones and how far out the stack protrudes past the, I mean, you're tripling the distance. I mean, originally it's 40 feet, now you're tripling that. That's not like you're doubling the area, you're extending by another 10 feet, so. We I had an existing situation that was 86 feet out. We tore that out, essentially, and started to go with the permanent piers that extended us to the request for 120. So we were uh, existing non-compliance previously with the floating docks. Please, Commissioner. Um, you said you 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 were at 80 feet non-conforming. You tore that out, so you're now again at 40 feet. Is that right? Our, no, we're we're what we removed are these outer legs that okay. were the concern of uh, Eagle. So that was part of our agreement with the dismissal of the um, ticket with the um, township was to remove those docks immediately and we and we had I think 30 days or 60 days to comply with that and we did. Okay. So currently they're conforming or non-conforming? There's still, um, I believe even the, the pre-existing floating docks were more than 40 feet out. So they're, they're what's there right now is non-conforming. It is. I guess you I have a actually, if I could just yeah, uh, address, I see there's a hand raised in the audience. There's a separate action item for public comment, which I'll get to after the uh, after the discussion from from the uh, other commissioners. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Please go ahead. I just wanted to inquire again more about that existing nonconformity. Is that rolled all sort of into this proposal and in this plan? Is that what I'm hearing, or is that if if this weren't to go through, that nonconformity has to be taken care of? What what is that status? Uh, this would be a a full replacement of what's there. So it's, it's a, a new request. Right, okay, so new request. But if this request, let's say this request weren't to go through, then what would happen with that existing nonconformity? Um, that, there, there is an existing floating structure that's still on the, the east end, if I understand correctly. A portion of it's still there. We demoed um, one uh, T of it and started driving pilings. So there's currently on the east end, there are uh, two T's of floating docks and then pilings driven past that that we started for the permanent structure. On the west end, there uh, is permanent structure with the uh, T-docks removed, but there, it's, more, it's located in a different location to accommodate the T-structure. So it would have to be removed based on this drawing also. So we demo everything and start fresh. What do you have to prevent <coughs> boats from coming up and parking perpendicular to your outside legs? Um, from the pole end of these? It's, it's a very rough area of the lake. That would be very difficult to do. Um, with the launch next door, we see a lot of wave action. That's really what started us changing from the floating docks to the permanent docks. We couldn't keep our floating docks together uh, with the amount of waves. And I think as boats are leaving the, the launch and returning to the launch, they're going on and off plane and creating large waves right at our location. So it would be very difficult to tie a boat up there. We've never had that happen, and we're currently configured like this. We have an L, what I'll call an L situation, and we've not, I've never seen somebody you know, park in that manner. So there, we, we would have to enforce that as a club, I guess would be the... I guess the, my question is, who's going to make the enforcement? Of the dock, we have a dock master in the club that manages the docks. Okay. A couple other questions I, I would have re regarding that. Um, you said that other yacht clubs could come in because it's a joint venture with you or you're in a general... Consortium, I guess you could call it, of yes. others. So we're considered a 501c7, mm -hmm. which is a social club. So it's much like an Eagles or a Moose. You can go to other facilities as long as you're a member of one right. of them. Okay. So they, they could come and use our facilities. And we do ask that they call first, just in case, you mm -hmm. know, we, they have, that we can accommodate them. And, uh, so, but they call reciprocation rights within the American Yacht Club of America. Okay, suppose that <clears throat> yachter or that boater comes in, brings their boat, 
looking to stay for a weekend. They don't have a necessarily have a vehicle from transportation. What's to prevent them from staying overnight at your at the facility? Yeah, we would not allow that. They, we would. We have a full time club manager. We have 33 people on staff at the club, so we're fully staffed uh, any times that the club is open. Okay, <clears throat> and a second question I would have, I don't know if be directed, I guess, more at you, Dan, as far as this is concerned. we You talk about a 120-foot dock. What's to stop Hayward's or Johnny's or the city of Belleville at Doan's Landing from coming to us and saying, hey, we just gave a 120-foot dock out there. We want to put a 120-foot dock in so that we can provide space for people to come and enjoy the restaurants that we have here or partake of some refreshments from Hayward's or what have you? Yeah, the, the simple answer is there's a set of special exception criteria that the BZA has to meet to be able to uh, justify any exception like that. And one of the items that's embedded in the zoning ordinance pertaining any approval of an exception is that it's not precedent setting. So each case has to stand on its own merits. And in this case, it's, it's essentially up to the BZA um, to determine the uniqueness of this site, the circumstances around the site, the demonstrated need for a minimum amount, amount of dockage that would justify that length. That would, uh, it, it's really up, if anybody else were to apply, they would have to make the same kinds of justifications and stand on their own merits. Um, this being the use that it is with very specific voting. Um, and it, we look at other factors in the BZA's review in terms of its, its limited frontage um, relative to its overall area and the, client, the, the uh, number of people that it serves. Um, the, the limited frontage essentially for, for having this voting need, and as Mr. Jones referred to it as a, more of like a boat parking, um, they would need to expand outward rather than where they kind of lack in lateral space. So those are the kinds of things you'd look at based on the specific service that this site provides. It's got a, a very distinct um, use requirement that, that kind of um, forces the, the, the longer length of the dock relative to some of the other sites like Hayward's might. Well, I'm concerned, what about the city of Belleville, that Dones Landing? There used to be a marina there when the Dones building was there. And they had a dock that extended out, I don't know, 60 feet, 70 feet. I don't know what it was. But they, had, in fact, they had two, two of them there, I believe it was, that they would allow boats. In fact, they would even rent the slips, I think, at times. <coughs> and if they're coming to us, they're going to be requesting that that probably would be as at least as long is what was there before. I would say um, the distinct the distinct request like that and the merits of that request is really the purview of the BZA uh, to, to, to determine if there's justification for a, an exception. Um, so it, it might be helpful to look at this case more in terms of is there a demonstrated uh, minimum use need for this site and does the layout um, meet the planning commission's um, concern areas regarding circulation and, and overall safety, um, because those are certainly valid questions. Those are things that the BZA has to look at. I, I think you guys, I think you'd see a pretty large increase in that uh, number of extensions as well. And even though they, they could be looked at individually, I think you'll see a big increase. But I, I mean, I'm still at the point that in order to alleviate, I mean, as one of the criteria is to actually show that it doesn't impact the safety of the, of the public, you know, given that in this case it's it's a private investment into the lake and it's at a narrow point. So I mean, even for even some of these other slips to say, hey, what what impact does it have on boating traffic and safety, you know, in adjacent parcels? I mean, to me, if that study is done, it answers a lot of questions that a lot of, a lot of residents have with regard to that, and it could maybe put them to rest. But other than that, it's going to be their concern that their safety requirements, and we're gonna have to make a decision on the fact that they have a concern on whether or not we, you know, we overrule that concern in a way. I'd prefer to have an expert tell me that 
you know, as opposed to me personally saying it's not, it's not going to impact safety, I'd rather an expert tell me it does or doesn't so that I can make a judgment call. Can I ask a question to the Planning Commission on that note, based on your, your comments, uh, Commissioner Grant? So Grant, are you done speaking for the moment? Yes. Then yes, you may. Thank you, thank you. Um, just to uh, clarify that point, um, there's a layout aspect, I think, of that concern and a uh, volume aspect of boats. Uh, so I guess what I'm asking is, is the concern about the um, the number of boats or the, the configuration of the docks relative to the, no, the I, uh, access? To answer your question, I, it, it's, it's about all of it. It's about the configuration of the dock, the length of it into the lake, and the dimension across from the dock to, to the other side, and the, the, the actual boating distance and safe speeds that people can travel um, in the middle portion of the lake and where there may be no wake zone. You know, how narrow does that middle section get? As, as one resident said, you know, if there's two-way traffic, you know, and, and you're pulling people on tubes, you know, is there a safety concern? If there isn't, I understand that, and that's great, but I don't know that answer. And, I, and I'm going to have to make a judgment call based on just my personal opinion. Director Power, do you know of any uh, organizations or in your capacity as a professional planner that could provide that sort of traffic study? I ask because in land use situations, traffic studies are something that we routinely ask for applicants to submit. C certainly could look into that for water-based uses. It is, is more unique, and I am not um, equipped tonight to to really answer that fully, but it, with the applicant here, you might also consider asking if, if he's aware of any studies regarding the, the circular, or the, um, any parameters regarding the, the circulation of the traffic around the site or anything else you could speak to I, about the safety. I have some pictures Jones, that. Do you have a comment on <laughs> regarding that? <laughs> I have some pictures I can share with him. I understand that this is not the professional, uh, professionally authorized traffic study that you are apparently, as you're requesting, uh, I hope you'll allow Mr. Jones to present. Yeah, so currently this is the land to land. It's, uh, you know, the figures that we came up with are 898 feet. Um, so that describes the, the distance all the way across the lake. Um, our docks, this is showing 120 feet out. Um, from our current property line, or 120.18. Um, the circulation pattern on the lake is counterclockwise, so boat traffic on our side of the lake is required to come from the bridges towards Sandy's Marina. This would be an uh, overview of, sorry, upside down again. This is one of the things we discussed with uh, BZA last night. The dock to the left is the dock sticking out from uh, the launch next door. That line, if you go all the way over to our docks, is about six, the first 64 feet of our dockage uh, falls within that zone of the dock. So if a boat's approaching from the counterclockwise, they would have to be at a pretty tight angle to hit that front 64 feet. So we're past that, we're as asking for another uh, 56 feet of dockage. I do not have a um, study and I'm not aware, it's not in, in my field of expertise, so I don't know of anything. Please go ahead. You work with a marine engineer? Yeah, but yeah, we do. We're working with uh, King Engineering. Is there any way they, they could develop a graphic that stretches across the lake that defines the zone of boating relative to the dock, say, identifies the no wake zones relative to the end of your dock from the other side and what this and show the, you know, show the yeah. dimension. Well, space, yep. And then show the distance as boats can stay away from another. We do another. know that they could have a 40 foot dock on the other side and there's 200 foot no wake zones. You can navigate in them, you just can't be on plane. But if, but if you should, you could show a graphic that identifies safe boating distances within the, you know, those safe boating zones, I think that would answer a lot of questions. Yeah, we, we believe that takes the um, safe navigable space down to 
762 feet. Or I'm sorry, 672 feet. So is there any way that you could get your engineer to generate a drawing that describes this information so that we, you, we can report it, one, to show that you've proved sure. that it's safe and that we can make a decision based on that information? Sure, and I, I, I think that's the main concern that I, we table that BZA because we have to go back to them with that distance, okay. and I don't want to speak on their behalf, but um, so our intention is to um, show them those distances and, okay. and our safety plan. Uh, we left it, I believe, last night with most of the concern around safety. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. Recognized. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has definitely been a different way we have done it. Uh, it used to be that when the Planning Commission had a public hearing, they usually didn't do action on items, especially if there was a lot of questions. And usually things would come to the Planning Commission first before they went to BZA, but because they weren't asking for a variance, it was decided they could go to the BZA just asking for a special exception. And the special exception that was requested was to go from the 40 feet to the 120. That was tabled. So the BZA has given the Township Planning Commission no direction on how they feel about those docks being 120 feet out. So because you have to go back to them, I would like to ask this board to also table this until we get direction from the planning, from the BZA as to what, it will also give us time to have the safety concerns that they had answered. And I think we can all come together because they should meet, I mean, they can have a meeting in the next month. We could follow our meeting right after their meeting and I think we'd have all our questions. Hopefully we can make the residents in the area more comfortable with what's going on because I think we all value what the BZA does for the community and how it supports the community. And we certainly don't wanna say no, but we also wanna make sure that it's done so that everybody is comfortable. And I think that would help. Point well taken. Commissioner Cullen, uh, you were at the BZA meeting. Yes. Uh, serving in your capacity as uh, unseated <laughs> alternate. Do you have any comments you'd like to make regarding the meeting? Uh, <clears throat> No, they were just very concerned about safety. And I think this, the reason the safety issue is up there is the length of the dock going 120 feet and extending so far out that you're cutting down that range. And I, I live on East Huron River Drive. I, on the lake side, I don't have lake frontage, otherwise I'd have a boat and understand more of what's going on on the boat uh, or on the lake. I didn't realize that there was a direction that you had to follow when going around the lake as being counterclockwise. You're not uh, the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and what brings that up is when we start to look at the safety issues that are coming there and other people using the lake, do they realize that? And then coming from the other direction, does that pose a problem at 100? I believe that you guys need the, the dockage to some extent but 120 feet is what bothers me sticking so far out into the lake, especially at that point where it's narrow. And I mean, it's not the narrowest point, obviously between the two bridges is the narrowest point, but it's one of the narrowest points on the lake, um, which has a concern for people that aren't familiar necessarily with the correct boating rules as far as, I mean, I could go to the boat show tomorrow and buy a boat and put it on the lake. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I understand. And, and that concerns me. Uh, you know, we don't have the licensing the way we do with automobiles. At least you hope that the people that are on the road have some sense of understanding the laws that are out there. But that's not necessarily true with boaters. And extending 120 feet is what... I think has got the, the feeling I got sitting in the audience last night from the BZA and from what I'm hearing here is the concern 
is there some way we can work with that to reduce that length and still provide you with what you would like? I don't know. That's a question that I would like to bring to you in that manner. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, you had a comment I just or question? had one, yeah, final, final comment. Um, we had heard from Ms. Brown earlier um, that she said, you know, she doesn't see where this serves the entire community because um, she felt like it didn't maybe serve the public. Um, and you gave us some, you know, examples of things that are done in the community, which are really great. Um, but in looking at our criteria for special approval, we have, you know, promotes the land in a socially and economically desirable manner. Um, and for the township as a whole, and then we have where it's necessary for the um, public convenience. Um, and that this provides lake access for some people who reside um, in Belleville um, and provides distinct educational rec recreational amenities. And we heard from um, Director Powers that this sort of helps meet that requirement. Um, it, it's my understanding that your membership is limited to men only. Is that right? No. <laughs> it's not? It's not true. So women can become members of we the have Belleville Yacht Club. Members of our club. Okay, and when was that? And when was that started? And so the club was founded in two thousand nine. Okay. And we acquired the moose in twenty twelve. Okay, and when were women allowed as members of the Belleville? Our Yacht bylaws club? don't have never excluded anything. So. Your bylaws have never excluded women. Um, so a woman could join today. They could uh, they could apply and become a full member in the Belleville Yacht Club. They could. They could. Okay. They have to meet the criteria for membership. Okay, but a criteria for membership is not based on sex then? No. Okay. Thank you. I do have comments. <laughs> as, 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 as the commission well knows, I have comments. Uh, but as acting in my role of vice chair, it's my primary responsibility to facilitate the discussion uh, and, and to not uh, participate as fully in the discussion as I might normally. I was in the BZA meeting acting as the BZA rep, uh, the seated BZA rep. I will say that I did have uh, significant concerns about the safety about, uh, of the 120-foot dock length. Uh, I will also add that there, were there was a significant amount of public uh, comment and, and very good discourse brought up in that meeting. I hope the applicant feels the same. The Planning Commission hasn't had the benefit of reviewing that public input. Uh, it hasn't had the input of uh, the opportunity to review the correspondence from the BZA meeting. The BZA did table the, uh, I'm sorry, they didn't table it, Postponed, postponed it, right? It. Postponed it uh, so that the applicant would have a chance to present to you their use case, their usage uh, uh, plan, as well as to go over their site plan. The BZA uh, felt that it would be in the applicant's uh, best interest and, and in the BZA's uh, best interest to make a decision regarding the special use or the, the exception for them to have all of the information available. And that, that's why the decision was postponed yesterday. I would say that the BZA felt that the site plan as presented uh, was lacking in some, some detail. I, I'll, I'll also at this point say, combining our, our assessments of the special use criteria and the site plan sometimes muddies the discussion. We've heard some, a lot of back and forth from the commissioners tonight about, about the use case. What I have not heard tonight are specific uh, requests or uh, comments or suggestions on the content of the site plan, which is also up for review. And I'll say that may have been my fault by not being clear about what the topic of the discussion was. If any of the commissioners would like to make comments onto the, uh, the content of the site plan at this time, any details that you feel are missing, uh, or 
additional items or notations in the notes section regarding the use, this would be an appropriate time for the commissioners to add that on. I say that because although I, I believe there's been a, an opinion that maybe we should uh, postpone the remainder of this item, I think it's I think it's important for us to give direction to the applicant with regard to their site plan and to staff with regard to the site plan is what we'd be looking for in order to move beyond a preliminary site plan appraisal. If any of you would like to discuss the site plan, I would, uh, I would be very happy to entertain that before we move into public comment. I, I guess I could start by saying the usage statement, which I think he said needed to be on there. The depth of the water, we know that is on there, so I think that needs to be cleaned up. And I, and I guess my, my biggest concern is because the special exception was not given by the BZA to go out the 120 feet. I think that needs, needs to be justified because if they are not going to prove that, then the site plan is not correct at all, so I think um, they need to work with what they're gonna do or what the BZA is gonna approve. Because we can't approve it with 120 feet when the BZA didn't act on it and they postponed it. Yeah, it, I, I, I don't know what chicken and egg, which comes <laughs> first, but yeah. We'll, well, well, we have to have their approval before we can approve it. Okay. So, so BZA comes before planning commission. Well, yes. Well, they ha we have to have their approval one way or the other. And because they postponed it, they didn't come up to a, a conclusion at all. Okay. And so as a board member, I hate to take it to my board when we don't know what it's going to be and ask for them to approve the special use when we don't know what's going to be approved by the, what is the BZA going to allow? So that's why I think it's an even in your best interest you go to the BZA and we'll come right in behind it, just like we did tonight. And we will get this worked out. My, my question would be is, if we approve the special land use for Marina, are we saying it's okay for a 120 foot dock? That would really be a recommendation to the Township Board of Trustees. Um, I think there are there's enough overlap between the site plan approval and the special land use that there's no real benefit in, in separating them out, if that, yeah, if that makes sense. You probably want to wait till you have the site plan to a level of comfort that you can recommend that. I can interject. In the previous case, I think that's exactly what happened. The site plan wasn't, uh, wasn't sufficient in detail to recommend to the board that they consider it. This, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's, that's what you were saying, Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to see more on the site plan. Uh, better cross-section on the dock. What is it composed of? Um. I would ask if the commission is uh, all right from a site plan standpoint with these docks taking up the width along the frontage. Uh, are there any comments regarding taking up 81% of the frontage versus a smaller, a smaller amount, a, a lesser amount? Any comment? It's, to me, it's their frontage. As long as they're not imp impinging on those properties on either side. And again, where I can see a problem is if they double stack boats. We get bad weather, and all of a sudden everybody's looking for a place to pull in to get out of the, the weather for whatever reason. Does that cause a problem? Um, and on the west side, you said is where the boat launch is. And uh, but what about on the east side? We have a residential neighbor on the east side. But what, is there anything to prevent from pulling in and parking perpendicular in that direction? Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's very similar wave condition. We've never had that happen. So we haven't you know, experienced that, but, and we have operated there since 2012. We have some experience with the, you know. Docks. But you haven't, have your docks been to the edge of the property line or I? They are, they, on that side they are currently, yes. They're within okay. five feet of the property line. Okay. Commissioner, did you have uh, something you wanted to bring up? 
No, I, oh, okay. I, I agree. I was going to say okay. I agree, but also it's, it's I think like Commissioner Budd said, it's a little bit, until we have more guidance, I think it could need a wait. Okay. I will say that as, uh, you know, I will be working on your site plan. I think that there are some items that you really do want to include in the detail. Um, typically on land-based site plans, we have the parking, uh, the parking lot has stripes, shows where the cars go. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> and your site plan should really show the boats. size, the boats. The, yeah. where, the, the, and I believe that's not the parallel parking, that's called broadside parking. Uh, and that's a term that uh, I, I think yeah. it's called. I think it's called broadside parking. Uh, parking in the uh, in the the not MDEQ Eagle in in Eagles uh, in Eagles rules. And I think they also have recommendations on turning radius in the Michigan uh, in the Eagles. And I think it's one and a half times the boat, uh, one and a half times the slip length. You should check it because they do have that. That's what th created all the issue with the T dot. So yeah, absolutely. And I want to make sure that in any site plan that we move forward on, that it one, of the, one of the things I don't want to have happen is that we work to get a site plan that we at the Van Buren Township level and that you at your club level are can be behind, and then have it be denied by by Eagle on a technicality. And so. th that's what has got us to here. The e Eagle considered in my discussions with them, the one and a half times going perpendicular out into the lake. So. Uh, additionally on the site plan, the next one you bring before us, clearly the water depth needs to be called out. I do believe that having a depth contour uh, called out to show what is the depth at the seawall, what is the depth at the different piers uh, okay. would, be, would be beneficial. Uh, certainly what's required is the depth at the end of the dock uh, I'm not sure if the full contour map is is required, but it would it would help understand no help us understand what's going on. Yeah. Uh, the percentage of the frontage that's being occluded uh, needs to be called out specifically as a percentage, so that we don't have to do the math on it when we yeah. review it so every time. I, that's what I was a little confused on that. Are you considering the heart structure there, only, there or is are you considering the 60 feet in between us? The staff can help you yeah, figure okay. out how to do it. There's a, it's actually spelled out in the ordinance exactly how to calculate it. Got it. That's not something we should go over <laughs> in the gotcha. at, at, at 8.15 at night. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely show where the docking is. I think that you need to, on the site plan, also show your uh, safety, your safety um, devices. Do you plan to have life jackets, life rings? Uh, you have a dock that you're proposing goes out 120 feet with a three-foot rise at the end of the dock. Uh, if someone were to fall off the end of the dock, they'd be swimming 120 feet before they could get to seawall. You need to have the, the ladders shown. I believe our ordinance says that you have to have an address uh, visible at the lake side now, which is a signage requirement. Uh, in addition, you need to work out what is the material. Uh, we like material samples in Planning Commission. Uh, <laughs> um, and th that's just a list of the, 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 the smaller items that I think for a, uh, I think those are the bigger items. Those are the ones that, I, that I come immediately to my mind that we'd need to see on the next site plan revision. Does okay. that make, does that make sense? Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any issue with any of those? Sure. Is there any more? Uh, discussion from the Planning Commission before I ask for public comment. Commissioner? I'd like to add to that. I think it would be helpful if we had a, a plan graphic that actually, sh in, you know, piling on your thought of showing the boats and, and patterns going across the lake, showing the boating zones, and to even show traffic patterns would be helpful. Okay. And maybe a radius idea f from the end of your dock swinging out across the other side of the lake. Uh, that's a good that's a good point commissioner. We've seen many cell phone graphics, <laughs> views of Google Earth in a perspective view straight down with I've seen four numbers now telling me how far it is to the other shore. <laughs> I think that needs to be done with a little uh, a little more precision right. than uh, than uh, on a Google map. I think that that we have we may have professionals on staff that can do that type of surveying worker we could require it 
Uh, but I would, I would leave that to staff to find a, a, a solution that is uh, a way to figure out how far we are from the opposite shore if staff's amenable to that. Uh, I will ask one final, if there's no more questions from the, from the commission, I'll ask one more. Director Power, I heard some uh, questions tonight from the public, uh, and one that I felt could, uh, maybe you could expand on just a little bit. There was a, a, a comment from uh, Ms. Penny Young uh, about the order of operations. Why, why is there not a site plan going to the state of Michigan before it's coming here? Why, how, and, and how, is, how is the site plan being funded? Uh, that, that was a question, and I think, I know I know the answer, but I think if you could explain that order of operations, I'd like to address it because it was brought up in the meeting this evening. Sure. Um, with the typical process for activity or development or construction on the Township Lake property, it is property that the township owns. And so what we do is we have an authorization to proceed with application to Eagle, which is the primary permitting entity, and then if necessary, FERC. Um, we, uh, therefore, Eagle's involvement is integral to the ultimate review of this plan. Typically, the township will make their review first, um, but we know in this case there are standards that Eagle enforces, and Eagle has been part of the entire review of, of the reconstruction of the, do the docks um, in, in coordination with the township um, intermittently. So what I had done was to, uh, and you can see right on my report that I um, CC'd Jeremy Richardson of Eagle, which is it's not unheard of for other lake authorizations as well. So what I simply did was to forward him the reports that you're seeing tonight as a matter of uh, courtesy, just to know where we are in our review process, knowing that of course Eagle still has to make their review. Um, additionally, we consult with Eagle as needed to understand what their rules are in terms of enforcing NARIPA and the, the Part 301 rules to better understand what they're looking for in their review. Um, I know Director Akers, who uh, thankfully is here tonight, was able to um, ask some questions of Eagle and, and get some, some guidance from them um, just in terms of the, the length requirements that they have and the riparian requirements that they have. So uh, it's just a matter of regular coordination. We weren't, um, we weren't developing any plans or sending them anything that we weren't just already reviewing as a matter of courtesy. So ho hopefully that clears it up. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hearing no more requests for comment from the commissioners, I would I want to recognize that there was an audience member who did uh, have a hand raised earlier and I had to I had to uh, stop stop the comment because it wasn't the right order. This is not a reopening of the public hearing, but I would like to recognize the audience member if if you still have a question that wasn't answered and would like to come up, please come up and and uh, speak to the the board. I do. Do I have to say who I am again? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> please do. <laughs> it's 12007 Reisner Drive. Um, and I don't know that I can, if I can get questions answered, but in the presentation that was just done, I thought they said that the new dockage will have 22 spots and it's replacing one that had 24 spots. Is that correct? Uh, the one we have has no spots. Okay. And the rationale for changing it is because you have more membership, yet we're decreasing the dockage by two spots. Um, the other comment that you shared was showing how far out the DNR dock went, um, which is, I thought, said like 62 feet. Um, as a member of the community, 62 feet, I don't think, would be encroaching on the safety in the area because it's similar to what the DNR has. I think you also said that you were re trying to replace the dockage with a more permanent one because the DNR waves are moving the temporary dockage that you have. Was the DNR site there before you chose that location to put the Belleville Yacht Club? I think it was. So <laughs> um, I guess those are my comments. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. If there's no other public comment or if the commissioners don't wish to respond, Great. Excuse Mr. me. Chair. Oh, I do see uh, two hands. Now, I want to make clear, we are not reopening the public comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a letter that I'd like to show you. Oh, you have one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
I'm sorry, I'm not reopening the formal public hearing. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Please, please, please yes, you, you may, yes. Absolutely, you come for public comments, not the public hearing, I apologize for that. Penny Young at 42113 East Huron River Drive. Um, I'd like to, because you brought up about the permit and the township being involved, I have a letter here from the state, and, and you're right, um, BYC has submitted a, an application, but not a revised application. Okay, and so it says the docs were brought to the Eagles' attention by the township in August of 2020, and we have been engaged with the property owner and the township since then in an attempt to resolve the matter. The property owner submitted an after-the-fact application for the docs in June of 2021. Well, in 2020, our township actually caught, you know, docs being put in without a permit. And that's probably the reason why everybody is paying attention to this. If it had been done properly, this would not probably be where we are today. Um, I think 120 feet is very, a, a real safety issue. Um, and I, I agree that uh, BYC does a lot for our area, a whole lot. But I guess I'm tired of the political favoritism. Is, is my thought. So when it says that the property owner submitted an after-the-fact application for the docks in June of 2021, however, the structures were not consistent with the requirements for the marinas, and a permit was not issued. Eagle responded to the after-the-fact applica application and recommended a revised site plan consistent with the new criteria. Okay, and then we can go on. It says, to date, we have not received a revised site plan for the marina. However, we are aware at the township meeting this week and a revised site plan is proposed. Van Buren Township recently provided us an update that the Belleville Yacht Club, uh, Yacht, Yacht Club has applied for a special approval and site plan for the proposed marina at 831 Eastern River Drive, which involves completion of the 228 wide and 120 long multi-dock structures and a copy of the proposed site plan was included with this information. I just, I don't understand why we are using, I, I feel that the proof of what needs to be done should be with the BYC. So then as it continues, it says, Based on a preliminary review of the proposed site plan provided by the township, the docks appear to be limited to the owner's riparian area if broadside mooring is not proposed on other west and east sides of the piers. So that would tell me that you probably cannot place boats along the outside of the piers. And I just have a hard time understanding why we are sending, I understand you have to work with the state, and I understand, you know, the sections that the, they have to meet, all of that is out there for anybody to see, and I understand why you go forward and try to talk to them, but to send them the revised proposal, I don't think is something that our township should be doing. Um, I asked Mr. Richendaller, or I'm sorry, not mm. Mr. Richendaller. <laughs> um, I asked Mr. Richardson, is this the usual that our township would submit the revised plan before the applicant does? And he said it is highly unusual. So that is my comment. And I just feel that it's necessary that we look at the safety for everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Director Parler. Did you have something to interject? If you'd like me to respond, yes. It's just simply, it was an email with the packets that you're viewing tonight that was sent to Jeremy Richardson. So it's it's just simply that I was CCing him or including him on the packet distribution for tonight's meeting. There was no request for any review or any additional staff time beyond a very quick email. So that that's what I sent. It wasn't a, a specific effort in sending a revised plan at this time. It was just a, a forward of the packet. Thanks, sir. There was another hand raised. Uh, is there any additional public comment? Please come to the podium, state your name. Yes, sir. My big concern is, I, I 
is that on a really busy summer weekend, the DNR ramp fills up. That's been expanded, right? And if this is a federal reservoir, which means that you have to go counterclockwise. If this is the DNR ramp here, boats going in here have to go by the DNR ramp and turn in here, right? Mr. Van to leave, which way they got to go? They got to go out this way, correct? To comply with the federal mandate of counterclockwise motion on a federal reservoir. Who's going to enforce all that? You're going to have somebody out there all the time enforcing that? That's a big traffic concern. You've got to go this way to turn in here. You've got to go this way to exit. If Sir? You go in a counterclockwise motion. And the cop boat has enough stuff. I want to know, too, what Wayne County Police Department boat and the Van Buren Township Police Department boat thinks about this. Sir? Could, I could interject for just a moment, sir. Could you stand by the podium and talk in the microphone? There are, there are other people watching the meeting and they can't hear your comments if you're not standing there. You're not you standing see what there. I'm trying Thanks. to tell you? Yeah. The traffic pattern has to go this way, in and that way out. They got to cross in front of the DNR ramp and all those people trying to get in and out of there to turn in. Mm. That, that's a big concern for me. Meanwhile, I'm coming down the lake on either side in my boat, and this is all crunched into together. I'd, so I'd like to see some input from law enforcement on what they think and how this traffic pattern is going to work. That, that's all I want to say. Thanks for your comment. I believe that was also echoing uh, what Commissioner Grant had said regarding traffic. Is there, uh, are there more? Yes, yeah, sir, please come to the podium, state your name and address. Hi, my name is Doug Watchman. I live on at uh, 11655 Hoyt Drive in Van Buren Township um, on the Edison Lake Extension. Um, most of the issues raised have been around safety concerns and I, I I think that's a valid consideration. And the planning commission, I mean, for safety issues you should plan first and the issue variances later, at, at least in, in my opinion. And there's a number of issues that have been brought out tonight and I'd, I'd kind of like to second those. Um, first issue is the traffic at the DNR launch site. I, it's uh, a very high traffic area. Uh, we've lived on a lake, a lakefront property for three years, but we boated on Van, on Belleville Lake for an, a number of years prior to that. And I've personally sat in lines where there are boats queued up in excess of 20 boats waiting to get off the lake, um, especially on weekend nights, Fridays and Saturdays. And if there's a special event on the lake, it's not uncommon to see at least a dozen or more boats. And, and from personal experience, I've seen more than 20 boats lined up there waiting for access to, access to the ramp. Um, so traffic issues at, at that launch site are, are uh, you know, a definite consideration. Um, the second consideration is maintaining a, the, uh, the traffic line through through the uh, or the channel through the the lake itself where the boat traffic has to pass through this is going to significantly narrow that 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 traffic channel through there there are no markers in there now there's no buoys i believe there's one buoy at the at on the east end of the uh, yacht club uh, site now that's just a, a no wake a no wake buoy but there's nothing to the west end on the uh, on the DNR site, there are no buoys there, there's no channel markers, there's no like sequestered or secluded area where boats can queue up uh, while they wait for the, you know, for the, for access to the launch site. And I think these are all issues that should be decided before there's any decision made on, on the, uh, on the, um, you know, the yacht club's extension in, into the lake that's gonna further restrict these areas. It's a congested and narrow and dangerous area now without the extension into the lake. 
and I think the the yacht club extensions are only going to make it worse, not not better. Um, um, once you grant a variance like this, or if you grant a variance like this, um, you now you've you'll force the hand of any decisions that are made later about traffic considerations on a lake because once they drive piling into the lake bed 120 feet out from the shoreline, um, any decision after that is gonna have to reflect that you have a permanent structure driven into the lake bottom at that point. So it's gonna affect traffic patterns at the DNR launch site. It's gonna affect traffic patterns on the lake. Um, so as per my previous comment, I think you should determine those traffic patterns first before you, before you allow a permanent structure to be driven into the Drake, into the lake bottom. Um, that's going to affect future decisions that would come before, before this board. Um, there's been comment about you know, setting a precedent. Um, I'm not so much, from a personal standpoint, I'm not so much concerned about the precedent as I am about the safety considerations. If you if you look at some place like Johnny's or Doan's or Hayward's or Sandy's Marina or the or the University Rowing Center, those all exist in guess you'd call them coves on the lake where they're not they don't jut out into the into a narrow traffic area in the lake so even if you were to gr to grant extensions on theirs where they wanted to extend farther into the lake it's it wouldn't greatly impede the traffic pattern on the lake I think this is kind of the all the opposite of that where uh, uh, an extension into the lake at this particular location is particularly concerning because it does impact the, the traffic on the lake, whereas opposed to something like a location at Johnny's or along the, the, the Belleville bridges in the downtown area, if, they, you know, if there were extensions built farther out into the channel in those areas, it, it wouldn't impede into the, into the actual channel or traffic pattern of the lake as, as this development would. Um, um, I, I guess that that summarizes my, um, you know, my comments at, at this point. I I just think that I'd, um, you know, in summary, I'd like to see the planning first and the variances later, as opposed to the other way around. And I I know you, you commented that normally it would come to the planning commission first and this has kind of been inverse and I, I think that's something that um, should be considered by this you know by this commission um, I know there's reasons for it but uh, it seems to me that you, we've somewhat got the cart before the horse in this in this situation because um, of the way it's been presented and and also the fact that uh, it proceeded originally without, um, without permitting or or this access before it started. So, I think that in itself drove some of the issues, um, you know, in, in the way it's being considered and the way it's it's been presented to the commission. And I don't think that should, I don't think that should stand as a precedent either, um, before this board. So, thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. Is there, uh, are there other members of the audience who wish to make public comment at this time? <coughs> Mr. Director Power, are there comments on Zoom that uh, you would like to hear? Yes, Mr. Chair, there are. If the, if the Planning Commission uh, would like to entertain these comments, I did have um, Mr. Jeffrey Riggs uh, who, who said, hello, I just got back from voting, uh, would you, cover the comments I had yesterday. Um, this was around 6 p.m. in tonight's meeting. And those uh, comments are actually were uh, forwarded and uh, I can summarize them if, if that's okay with the Planning Commission briefly. I'll try to summarize them to the best of my ability. Um, per the 
uh, meeting packet, the drawing shows 762 feet to the opposite shoreline per an attached picture, um, which is, uh, is emailed. I did the math. Um, the 762 feet to the opposite shoreline minus the 100 foot one, no wake zone minus the 100 foot uh, no wake zone on the north shoreline minus 40 feet uh, on the north shoreline equals only 522 feet for all boats uh, travel above no wake speeds. Uh, not acceptable in his opinion. Um, and then late, uh, he did mention lake traffic study is needed for this, uh, making the decision in the middle of the winter uh, without reviewing the current conditions and traffic um, isn't proper due diligence. Um, that's, there's another comment about the drawings um, only submitted to the township on December 21st, published on December 22nd, only two working days. Uh, that So just some comments about the, the content of the packet. Um, there's also a comment from an anonymous attendee. Uh, they would like to remind the commission members that the BYC is asking uh, for a variance of a variance when they discuss how far the plan, they plan on going out with the docks and the fact that this organization has already started construction until they got caught uh, without permission. Um, that's the, the comment, the second comment, uh, the second commenter tonight stated that. So those are the comments that appeared in the chat after the public hearing, so uh, came in a little bit later. Thank you, Director Power. Hearing no more public comment, I, I would ask the commission if they're ready to take an action on this item. I would entertain a motion. I move that we postpone <coughs> case 22059, Valval Yacht Club, uh, Marina Special Approval to a future time. And is that? Director Power, would you? Uh, Offer some assistance on yeah, how to yeah. how to how to postpone. Would a date be in order? So if you postpone, um, you you you, don't, you can leave some open endedness with regard to the date. Um, but I, I would ask you to make two separate motions if you are postponing the special approval and the site plan. Um, it sounded like there was some direction on the site plan you were looking for um, that was noted earlier, uh, and so. That's why I stopped at that. Is there anything I need to add to that if we're not going forward with the site plan yet? We would need to that motion. Commissioner, I think the Director Power is asking if you could make a motion, if we could entertain a motion on the first uh, the first item, the special that's, the special use. Uh, that's what I did, the marina special approval. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or special approval. I'm sorry, it's not special use, it's special approval. Yes, you, you Is there can anything make more I need to add to that motion for that to go through? I wouldn't think so. If you if you talk about the site plan items and the site plan motion, that should be fine. That's what I was asking. Okay, yes, that should be. Is there support for the motion? Support. Hearing a motion uh, from Commissioner Cullen and support from uh, Commissioner Budd. Uh, is there any discussion of the motion? No. Then I believe we'll do that one as a roll call vote, please. Callie Barr. Yes. Bernie Grant? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Brian Cullen? Yes. Jeff Char? Yes. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I would now entertain a motion regarding the final, uh, the preliminary and final site plan review item. And, and Mr. Chair, yes, sir. I apologize to interject again. There was some procedural comments. Um, if I, I understand the general direction to staff to work with the applicant to get the additional information that was requested, and I think there was good comments on what that information was. Um, there was some discussion of sequencing. Uh, is this, is that, could that be clarified at all with respect to what you're looking for to go, uh, what you're look, when you're looking to review this again in relation to the BZA's role, particularly? We're following the BZA, right? That's what we're looking to do, to see, to follow? their action right it would because they requ they requested from the bza an extension to 140. we need their direction as what they're telling them to do but because they postponed it they did, haven't given us any direction so that would be the direction we're looking for along with the comments about what we wanted added to the site plans and all of that 
Fair enough. I appreciate that. Uh, I would, I think there's a possibility there that I'm just thinking, thinking out loud. If there's some uh, interim um, de detail that's provided on the plans and some interim uh, progress on them, um, this process would seem to leave open the possibility of some discussion with the Planning Commission without taking action. So perhaps there's an interim discussion uh, prior to the BZA uh, if there's some progress on the plans and perhaps an opportunity to review them uh, before you take action on the request. My, my take on the BZA meeting last night was that they were looking for more information, a more detailed site plan. They had serious concerns about the, the safety issues. So I would mm -hmm. think that the BZA uh, would, th their intent on uh, postponing their decision was pending a site plan that better described both the use case and the safety, uh, the safety concerns with the site plan. So I would, I believe the BZA is looking for us to have a revised site plan to present to them. So from a sequencing standpoint, a review of the site plan, I think would, would, would be a preliminary site plan review then, and then coming to us after the BZA for a final? I certainly think you could do that. Um, would that be the proper way of looking at that, both for the standpoint of the BYC and as well as for the BZA and us? To make it more that? concise? You certainly can. I, s I think, does that, does that seem reasonable to the rest of the commissioners? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with Trevor? Or yes, I, <laughs> yeah, I, would, I would agree. I uh, trip back I'm to the BZ. I'm used to, I've, in the past, I'm, I've been used to it going to planning first and then planning contingent on BDA approval. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the same thing. Except I guess I'd like to know what the BZA was going to say about the before I submit another site plan, because. And, and that, that would maybe leave a sequence open that allows for a preliminary, either another discussion or a preliminary site plan review. Th there's, I'm sorry, there's not really a preliminary and final site plan with this process in the way that you usually see with other development sites, but you can, you can phrase it that way. But I think what I'm hearing is perhaps you wanna have a preliminary site plan that reflects the changes you were asking for tonight that you can review before it goes back to the BZA for their action based on your, your influence. But then before you take a final action on the site plan, you need to make sure that the BZA has approved the, the exception. So there'd be a planning commission BZA and planning commission sequence potentially. Mm -hmm. I think it sounds acceptable. I think, that, I think that's what the BZA was looking for was for a, a plan that was done at the 120 feet? No, a plan that addresses the concerns from the public. I think the BZA also voiced concerns about the, the, the length of the dock, the safety of the dock. Unfortunately, we haven't had a chance to review the BZA uh, meeting minutes, so it's hard to <laughs> say what they were doing at, at the meeting last night. Okay. Uh, so if uh, we would have a chance at the planning commission level to review what they were looking for, uh, and they, they, they'd then have a sequence of being able to look at our view on the use case before they granted the variance. I think that's why typically we don't go to the variance before there is a site plan that's been, uh, you know. Yeah. Discussed. Discussed, yeah, discussed, discussed, yeah, discussed yes. more, more thoroughly, yeah. So I think that's, I think that would be reasonable. A motion along those lines could be entertained or put forth. Let me see if I can put something together here. <laughs> <coughs> I move that we take the case 22059, Belleville Yacht Club, Marina Preliminary Site Plan into postponement for review as per the comments that were reflected to the BYC. Belleville Yacht Club prior to a site plan going to the BZA. Does that cover it? <laughs> Is there support? Then, that, then I believe that covers it. Uh, <laughs> okay, hearing support is there. I have to ask, is there discussion on the motion? 
Hearing, hearing none, uh, I would take that to a roll call vote, please. Sherry Budd? Yes. Bernie Grant? Yes. Callie Barr? Yes. Laura McCullen? Yes. Jeff Char? Yes. <coughs> now, do we need that on the final site plan or uh, a we're motion just two, to. Two action items tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So okay. that, uh, that takes us uh, now to a brief pause before a general discussion. And thank you to everyone in the audience who came tonight. This was a long meeting, but I think it was important. I think we received a lot of feedback from the public uh, that we need time to go over and reflect upon before we meet again. And again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the applicant uh, and thanks to our, our commission. As Hopefully we're able to give some direction to them as well. <clears throat> yes, thank you. And before I go into general discussion and updates, I would ask the ooh, Sergeant at Arms staff to see if Commissioner Kelly <laughs> is wake out there. The chairman is still out there uh, because. Uh, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> What, the annual report yet? Yes, we have the remainder of the agenda. The meeting is not over. You're, you are absolutely welcome to stay for the meeting. <laughs> we'll take that up in general discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, would uh, would the commission like to take a five minute uh, stand up and move around recess before we move into general discussion and the and the thing? Or I'll take that while I'm yeah. Brian. <laughs> Looking for. So I think Director Ron Akers is up. looking for him. Ron went up to get him. At this time, I think we're going to take a short five minute break while we. Take that. So, if you want to stand up, do we need a motion? Do we need a motion? motion I don't. To recess. I don't think so. okay. We're going to take a, a short five-minute uh, yeah. recess break. We can do that. Yes, sir. As a matter of the record, there, I, I think I'm, there's chat. The chat is continuing. There's some additional comments, <laughs> but I, I think what I'm incl inclined to do is just to, I'll, I'll copy those over from whatever happens, and then make sure they're distributed after the meeting, so yeah, everybody yeah, that everybody knows. Sounds, that sounds fair. Can be attached to the minutes too. Plan to do that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. You were asking. I just had a general question. Is there a is there a body in the township that manages things like uh, snail markers or pest control or is that sort of board responsible itself to like make pick out safety measures or like who they put in generally uh, g generally, Eagle is going to handle surface waters and anything that's installed at the surface. Uh, but I can check with our uh, code enforcement and police department to see if there's anything regarding that specifically. I'm not aware of any general ordinance in the township around that. We get some more. And maybe. Oh. 
Back from recess, uh, at this point in the agenda, Mr. Chairman, uh, we are at general discussion and updates, uh, and I believe, oh, I'm sorry, we are not at general discussion and updates, we're at item six, planning commission annual report, and I turn the meeting back over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Commissioner Jar. Um, I don't know, I've never hit the gavel before, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna call, have to- Call more recesses. Call more recesses <laughs> as a, and bring everybody back. So I'm kind of sitting here <laughs> tempted. Uh, I believe this is up uh, with your item, correct, Director Powers? Yes, I'll, I'll try to be brief. I appreciate everybody. This is two um, very long meetings in a row, so thank you. Um, I should probably get my act together and get some hot chocolate next meeting before we start to keep everybody fueled. Um, but I just, I'll, I'll give a summary as we always do for um, planning commission activities from the previous year as required by PA 33 of 2008, the Michigan Planning Enabling Act. Um, I was trying to get this site loaded up, but, but I think you're probably familiar with the site. Um, if you're not, here it is. It's on the home page of the township website. It's called the Development and Planning Portal. And uh, if, it, if the map works, you'll be able to navigate it and look at dots on the map that represent sites of development in the township that gives you a, a fairly up-to-date representation of what's been reviewed and the status of its approval. Um, but that being said, we've we had a, a busy um, 2022. Uh, I have formatted the report this year a little bit differently from previous years because we're trying to align our reporting with um, what's required for redevelopment ready communities um, through the state of Michigan. And, and so there's some, some categories that we're trying to uh, reflect in our reporting. Um, and we, we definitely have material for those categories. So with engagement activities, um, the Planning Commission held 17 public hearings uh, last year. Um, for an overall summary of the Planning Commission's activities, uh, the Planning Commission granted eight preliminary site plan approvals 
uh, four final site plan approvals and three combined preliminary and final site plan approvals. Uh, uh, reviewed seven uh, special land use approvals and recommended them to the township board, granted one site plan amendment, four temporary land use permits, uh, four rezoning recommendations, and including one uh, conditional rezoning recommendation that was uh, for the, the our next energy project. Um, the plan commission made three uh, zoning ordinance tax amendment recommendations, um, the most significant being a comprehensive set of zoning ordinance amendments uh, that reflected master plan efforts for the Sumter Road Corridor, uh, which was a very um, involved task, and I, I commend you all for the good work that you um, did with that. Uh, the Planning Commission granted two tree removal permits. Um, the Planning Commission way back almost a year ago, uh, we uh, recommended adoption of the uh, 2022 to 2026 Parks and Recreation Master Plan um, facilitated by the Community Services Department. Uh, the Planning Commission granted two extensions to previous site plan approvals, two requests for items that require review by the BZA, and uh, received comments on minor renovation and airport projects. The Planning Commission also implemented some aspects of the 2020 Van Buren Township Master Plan. Um, notably, the Sumter Road Corridor Plan was a recommendation of that, that master plan. Uh, we also looked at zoning ordinance text amendments that contemplated some of the uh, of the, the 2020 master plan, including uh, related to housing, development of small scale industry, uh, and the preservation of open spaces uh, throughout the township. Uh, this has uh, obviously been a very productive year, and um, there's been a lot of development that's been reviewed uh, responsibly by this planning commission, and I appreciate the, the work that you've done. I'll just highlight some of the major projects that are ongoing right now. Um, some significant residential development with the continuing construction around um, Victoria Estates or Townsend Park and Cobblestone Creek. Um, the completion of the 53-acre data center at 9000 Haggerty Road uh, called Project Sycamore. Uh, the 128-unit Clover Community Senior Apartments, the Kenworth Truck Sales Facility, um, and our own community center expansion, which have broken ground this year as well as some of the planning efforts that I mentioned previously. So just an all around very productive year. Um, I appreciate your, your participation. You've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Power. Um, we have to do a motion to uh, accept the, uh, the annual report, correct? Yes, you'll recommend the report be uh, uh, accepted by the Township Board of Trustees. Uh, can I get a motion to, uh, for uh, I have a motion to accept the annual report by the trustees. We're recommending that to the township board. I, uh, I move to uh, move to recommend the report as written to the for acceptance by the township board. I have a motion by Commissioner Jar, support by Commissioner Barr. Any comments or discussion regarding the motion? Seeing as none, can I have a roll call, please? Bernie Grant. Yes. Sherry Budd. Yes. Kelly Barr? Yes. Brian Culler? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. And it, motion passed. Uh, that brings us up to general discussion and updates. Anything for general discussion or updates this evening, Director Power? Uh, I do anticipate there being a meeting on the 25th. Um, I also will try to make uh, training opportunities this year readily available to everybody. Um, hopefully we'll come up with a, a uh, easy way to make sure everybody has enough information about the trainings, um, but otherwise I don't have any updates. Right. Thank you. I do have one question for you, Dan. Um, on the northeast corner of Van Boren and Sheldon, mm -hmm. what's going in there? There's a um, probably some surveying work that's being done. There's a company that's looking at applying for a site plan. Um, it's an automotive-related um, manufacturer of uh, Com small components, headlights, things of that nature. They're in preliminary, um, kind of a pre-application phase right now, but they I may be doing some survey work. I saw some flags out, and I also saw some equipment sitting there on the corner. Uh, okay. do uh, dozer and a excavator. Okay. Yeah. Nothing of activity with it, but just saw it sitting there and wondering. May have been some soil samples or, or uh, something. Northeast like. corner of uh, Van Boren and Sheldon. Yep. 
right, um, I just had two minor items. First one is I know we kind of mentioned it in passing about the bylaw revision for officers at the last meeting and taking a look at that. That's a kind of a small item. Uh, should be a relatively easy amendment to adjust the dates. Um, so something for later on doesn't need to be done immediately. And then the second one is I noticed that a lot of our boards are doing Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning. And I don't think I recall ever doing a pledge at the beginning of a meeting since I've started. So I wanted to run it by the board and see if that's something we would like to start doing at the beginning of our meeting. Okay. Yeah. Well, Me? Okay. So if we get DZA all the time. DZA <laughs> main meetings, and I, I was realizing the other day that something <laughs> is just never. <laughs> <laughs> so if we could add that on then for our agendas going forward. Certainly work on some bylaw revisions. Okay. Thank you so much. I, any other items for general discussion this evening? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Support. 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 <laughs> Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>